Hi, I'm Scott Garibay. I'm a guest DM for the Nordarchy crew, and we are doing a Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition campaign. Uh, it is at the Paragon tier, so all the characters are at 10th level. And I just want to go around and introduce all the players and their characters. So we have Bart, and he will be playing Belagar, uh, who is a dragonborn fighter sorcerer uh, with the soldier background. Of course, we have Ted. And uh, Ted is going to be playing today. Alastron. Alastron. All right. Human fighter, uh, paladin with a knight background. And uh, then we have David. And David is going to be playing uh, Luth, the exile. And he is a human druid sorcerer with an outlander background. It's and, funny, you didn't look Druish. <laughs> <laughs> and Ryan like is an going though. to be playing. Um, what do we have here it's for Ryan? Do I not have you listed? Eliath oh, yeah. Feldchainer. Eliath Feldchainer, half elf paladin warlock. A paladin, if you will. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Also with a knight background. And then. Uh, we have something really special tonight. Nathan is going. I'm going to be running uh, Nathan's character, who is a dwarf kineticist uh, with some bard levels, and he is a guild artist in background. And so we are going to be debuting the psionics edition material that he has been doing a series on in Nerdarchy. So, yeah. Yeah, so if cool. it if it seems or feels broken, send all your hate comments. To Nathan, Nathan, or, Nathan, 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 and then I will just simply tell them that I used all the rules there in the PHP for Wizard. I think it's quite balanced, <laughs> actually. Um, and uh, his his uh, his <laughs> name is uh, Arbram Holdenhale. All right, so let's get into it. Holdenhale, all right. got it. Yeah. <laughs> all right, okay. So uh, we begin, and you guys are in uh, the capital of. Um, the capital of Olmir. So uh, this this uh, campaign takes place, uh, Bart, this campaign takes place on Thracion, which is a world that I created. And uh, Thracion, essentially 300 years ago, it really had a kind of a clean slate. It had a cataclysm war, and two kings fought almost to the death of everyone. And so really everything on Thracion has been buried deep, deep, deep in these cairns. And they really kind of just, uh, they, they created these magical monsters, which just literally clean the surface of almost everything living. And so since then, people have been portaling onto Thracion, and most of the people on Thracion are known as sojourners. So people have come there, live there, uh, portal in from other dimensions, so you can see almost any you know any type of creature um, and lots of different magical items on Thracion um, and different cultures. So they're probably the ones spinning it as a, uh, a, a fresh start, because that sounds like a major branding thing where you basically have an apocalypse no, it's a fresh star. You right, know, exactly. Right? It's a new, it's a new exactly. Yeah. So uh, there's two. Uh, so you guys are on Olmir, and you're in the capital of Olmir now. And each of you, you can take, uh, you can mark down 500 gold onto your uh, sheets. You have been paid 500 gold for a secret midnight meeting uh, in the dark hour, and um, you uh, you accepted the, the the 500 gold about two days ago, and you were told that you would be um, contacted, and you are. So you guys are drinking some ale and enjoying some mutton in a tavern, and you get a, a you, there's a, t a just a knock 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 on the on the window of the tavern, and um, the an urchin puts up a symbol in the window which you were told to look for, and immediately at that point you were told to follow the urchin. The urchin, uh, you guys come out, and in the moment you guys come out, he bolts and begins climbing right up the side of one of the buildings and like uh, you know uh, motioning for you guys to follow. Okay, so with that, let's get your uh, characters onto the grid, and you guys are going up onto the rooftops. All right, no problems. I got some. Uh, I can help with that. I'm off the grid, yo. So cord cutters. All right, quick 3D print them. Yeah. All right. So only if it was so. That, I think that's, that would be that, awesome. That's a replicator. That's not a, a 3D yes. printer. T Earl Grey hot. All right. Um, the only kind of you can take him until unless you find something better you like there. Well, there's one for me. And I'm wearing dragon scale armor. Uh, dragon scale armor. I'm wearing his dragon scale. <laughs> <laughs> I have dragon scales, but uh, I'm wearing plates. <laughs> the dwarf. We'll use him for right yeah. now. So okay. much more effective. All right. And I thought about doing that because best. Best I can't armor. wear metal armor, so uh, I you want to use him for. Uh, uh, I already gave you that, right? 
I have a guy, yeah. Yeah, actually, you're more of a warlock. I'll only take him and I'll take that other guy. I'm more of a fighter. Um, oh, yeah, that's yeah, fine. Keep yeah. your guy, right? Uh, uh, that, do we have any wizard types? Any? <laughs> got a druid no. sorcerer and a. Uh, <laughs> Here, let me get, get, give me him back. He doesn't really fit. Um, and, uh, oh, and, yeah, so we have. He's oh, caster looking. You want him? Sure. Uh, Bart's, Bart's essentially. Okay. So Bart's good? No, that's one for me. I'll use him for now. All right. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah, it's not quite All a right. big and guys, but other guys out there, and actually, if you would start at the other end, and we're gonna come yeah. down. Okay. So roll down here. Yeah. All right. Okay, and then. Um, so we're on the rooftop. Is that yeah, are Santa Claus in it? Yeah, you guys are on the rooftop. And I am going to. So the notable feature about me is I have a retinue of uh, of imps with me. <laughs> so I have I have human retainers, but I imagine they're retired for the evening. So yeah. did they, I can't they, trust mine to leave them alone. So <laughs> they, they just kind of they circle come around with, you, correct? Yeah. Well, a lot of times too, though, when we're in the common populace, uh, maybe I, I have them be invisible. Um, so this way they're out of sight, out of mind for all concerned. All right, so this white uh, figure right here, this will be the urchin. It's a human urchin. He's probably about 10 or 11 years old. Very swift, uh, light. He's actually barefoot. Um, put him on the uh, toward me. That yeah, was perfect. Right? And so he leaps right across the 10-foot gap between those two. Uh, oh, actually, first you guys got to get to the roof. All right, so these buildings are 40 feet tall. Um, they're actually three stories. Um, and so you're, uh, well, I'm sorry, four stories. And um, basically, you guys are going to need to make a 40-foot climb right out of the gate. Mm. I will set your DC. Uh, one other thing, Bart, just since you're new, um, all, I never make secret rolls ever. All right? And so I'll actually set the DC, and I'll cover it, and then I'll, you know, I'll show you guys. All right? And the reason why I do that is if you die from a roll, you die from a roll. I don't like <laughs> on deaths ever. All right? So... Yeah, be aware. Right. Scott's not going down for this one. That's yeah. all he's saying. <laughs> so if it's straight TP, TPK, it's uh, right. it's legit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we all fall off the building. All right. Maybe. I have your DC. Your athletics, I imagine. Uh, you can use athletics. It's correct. Otherwise, you're using straight dexterity. Oh, dex. Yes. Okay. Um, no, um, athletics goes off of uh, strength. 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 Is strength. Well, yeah, that's case. you're fine. That's fine. So Nineteen. Yeah. Twenty-four. So you. I can use if you strength. have athletics, use it. Otherwise, you're using dex, straight okay. dex. All right. All right. Uh, what do you got? Uh, 24. 24. You're good. 19. All right. By one point, you're good. I'm an ape. I'm just going to climb up it. <laughs> it's uh, nice. Into an ape and nine. <laughs> 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 awesome. All right. right. And we're doing um, dex and not strength, correct? Uh, and um, actually, well, if you have strength. athletics, you can use that. Otherwise, you're using straight dexterity. Okay. Right. Well, also, one of the reasons for that is right now there's a lot of fog, right? Mm -hmm. And so you guys are you know, looking for handholds. The fog is kind of wafting through the streets and, all, and over the rooftops. Okay. I have an eight. Yeah. Okay. An eight? An eight. All right. It's actually well, if it's Dex, I have a negative one yes. Dex. And all right. That is awesome. Nine, so. All right. So. I got a 30. So. Um, all right. I'm high from this. Oh, yeah. You're way up. <laughs> so, actually, you're so high that um, you are about five ten feet behind him and um actually at, you're easily going up uh you know you you grab and start you know pulling yourself up and you can you look down and you can see him slipping and and having a very bad time so you're five feet away from him when he slips he slips at only 10 feet <laughs> do you want to just let him take the 10 feet d6 as a learning that lesson or <laughs> that doesn't really that doesn't yeah. really seem like a danger all right, so, so you're going to take 1d6 uh, in, in damage. I mean, he could break his knee, but... Right. <laughs> yeah. So go ahead and roll your roll your damage, if you would. Sure. Uh, five. Five points. The rest right. of us are at the top? Um, uh, actually, yes. The rest of you are at the top. You can attempt again. I lower a rope, <laughs> All right. Because uh, I am not spec... All right, that's a 17. All right. And he misses again, so uh, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna damage you again. But like a he, 17, I have a 17. Yeah, yeah. DC is 18. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> right there, uh, well, I'm, right there. I, I rolled an 18 on the die, so I literally that <laughs> there's a I can only do 10 percent better. So, so so you try again, yeah. and you're all embarrassed, and you have to you're like, you get out your pack, 
and the urch is like this, right? <laughs> so at this point, you throw the rope down, you make the climb again with advantage. Good I rolled roll. an 18. I, I can't, <laughs> I can't do contend with this. Like, oh, you're saying, uh, well, oh, I, I rolled an 18 saying. on the die. We'll have them tie them off and now. Uh, we'll wow, yeah. I have a so, negative yeah, one. So you literally dex. have to be lifted up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Black, they, they tie, actually tie, tie off. Tie. Right. And they tie yourself. Like, I have to pull like, you up. I have to bring <laughs> the roll. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Hmm. Now, at this point, you get to the top and you guys see the urchin. And the urchin is ready to bolt. Hmm. But you realize he, he had to be carried up. Are you guys going to. Now, at this point, that was climbing up the building. You now look Why over and, the and there's it's about three seconds. Where the shifting fog show you that where you're going is blocks and blocks away, leaping over rooftops and mm. over streets. Well, he well. is either going to be a pancake, or one of you may need to carry him. What uh, are your how choices? Much do you weigh? Oh yeah, I'm in full plate. So <laughs> yeah, full, plate, full plate, sixty pounds plus whatever he weighs. Wow. And so yeah. I'm one seventy five. So like two fifty ish. Call it that. Yeah, yeah. That's not. That's not a big deal. I could probably. Uh, so him. I so we see that this is going to be a problem. Yeah, absolutely. He's, like, tied off. Yeah. Like, how do you feel about being carried <sighs> or Not thrown? Proud. <laughs> well, That's it true. builds character, and I just pick him up, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'll cast enhance ability, so I get advantage on strength checks. So. All right. So now, explain to me what you're doing. Are you using your psionics to increase your strength? Yeah, and I'm using my psionics to do enhance ability, which. Uh, you can choose one of them. I'm choosing bull strength, which gives me advantage on strength checks, I believe. Uh -huh. Okay. So basically, every time I have to make a strength check, such as athletic, I can use bull too and pick the best. Now, when you use your psionics, um, is there a moment where you just kind of clear your mind, or is the, what does it look like at all? You don't have to answer that now if you don't know. No. Well, what <laughs> it's, exactly, it's, it's probably just using. like uh, some it? kind of uh, yeah, yeah. Like, that's, right. Yeah. And uh, so you take a moment to temper yourself, and you literally pick him up and begin, and the rest of you. You now are going to leap over that uh, that ten foot gap, and so everybody needs to make the roll. The DC is now fifteen. Good luck. I can use athletics again. Yeah. So, so I can't actually turn into an ape because of the CR. So I have to do a baboon that has the climb speed, and uh, which is much smaller. And I'm just going to hitch a ride on the back of the dragonborn <laughs> for these jumps. Nice. Nice. <laughs> All right. So you're going on him and now. Actually, so no, he's a dragonborn. I'm the dragon. Ah, uh, gotcha. Now that's not enough to give you disadvantage. Um, how do I want to handle that? It is going to make it more difficult, but I think these advantages are a little too tough. Uh, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to make your DC three higher. All right, so it's 15 for everyone else. You're back up in 18. Ooh. Good luck. If he goes down, you can leave off. Of him, right? <laughs> well, I, I totally crit the roll. All right. You okay. crit the roll. Okay. All right. What did you make? Oh, I missed it by one. By one, yes. he actually snags you and pulls you across, right? And uh, the two of you look back and then and look at this urchin like, oh, crap, this is it. This is a very dangerous start from the beginning. Bad the boys. three of you may now move <laughs> over, uh, move over, um, move the urchin all the way to the next building. But yeah, keep going perfect, right the back, back you know, the other way. I hear you. this embodied yep, stickers for my retainers. Uh, and as move as all the guys who have been moved. Being demoralized. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm not Lady Kay. Which yeah. guys are you here? Uh, the figure, yeah. You're not, yeah. Getting, you're not what, getting the damsel carry. What dignified way is there of a knight being carried? You jumped yet? Huh? You jumped across? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And you, I'm riding him. Uh, I got a 32, so. Uh, oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. Um. So this you guys have made it across what? there. Uh, the urchin the urchin leaps over again. Uh, yeah, he does this every day, so I'm not rolling for him. Go ahead. Uh, leap him over if you would. The rest of you guys run and make the next uh, make the next leaf, but there's fog, and I'll set your DC. Hold on, good luck. One second, let me. I'll tell you when the DC set. Probably would have been better just to stick you in the hole. The hole. The hole. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean, just stick him in the hole. Good luck. You have a portable. As we're, as we're jumping, oh, you're, you're, always, like you're always three higher. Like, you're okay. Good luck. Uh, Do you have anything that would you disrupt any type of you're well over. pocket dimensions on you? You're lucky, baboon. <laughs> Good luck. What? Go ahead. Move his pocket. Oh, oh, oh wow. 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 Okay, no, well, I, I, I wanted one of the two. You should have used the I've hole. I've got a 15. So you got a low DC for me? <laughs> I have a DC of 18. Oh. All right. Now, at this point, uh, did you make it? Oh, you're you're actually being carried? How are you? 
uh, you're being carried as well. I'm a monkey right, on so his back. Please literally. move all of those guys over to to yeah to the building where he is. Me. Right. This is you. Right. This is all right. right. Yeah. And show me where Nathan falling. is. Oh yeah, I see him. Go ahead and move him over. Oh he. Yeah, uh, Nathan is the dwarf. It, yep, that's good. And yeah, and just put him right behind. All right. And so you make you you clear it without any problem. And as the fog clears, a um, an arrow from a crow from a weather vane, right oh. in. Two. He said arrow. I was like, he's getting yeah. shot by yeah. arrows. Two D eight from uh, so, uh from okay. yeah. Would you like me to roll uh, uh, two guesses. He rolled so bad he got that shot by tough. a stray arrow. <laughs> yeah, I thought I got it. It was shot. meant for another guy, dude. It's like it's like the like innocent bystander of like a, a, a gang war. <laughs> you literally go pull back, you're bleeding already. You know, I'm like, whoa. I'm really questioning the wizard of taking that five hundred goals each. Uh, All right. Uh who so runs, who runs on rooftops, really. <laughs> uh, now, actually, at this point, you can make it um you, all you need to do is make an intelligence check to see that there's a weak spot here. And you can actually walk the rest of the way. All right. Mm -hmm. So everybody make a, an intelligence check. If you don't, you may fall through. I'll fall through. Uh, 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 wait, wait. No, I'll make uh, standard DC 15. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm in. Uh, 16. You got it? Uh, I, I did oh, not, yeah. but I'm on his back. Uh, so I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, you're being carried. I'm being carried. What do you got? 20. 20. Oh, whatever. I rock out. You guys are good. So. All right. And so yeah. you have made it. And I'll show you where you made it to. All right. I, I didn't make it. Oh, you do you failed? Oh, I failed. The fifth, the, uh, you failed the, the oh, 15. Oh, yes. All right. I am, I rolled a nice fat eight minus ones. All right. So at that point, right here, we'll put one right here. Which one is you? Dragon. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put yourself right there. And at that point, um, can I attempt to jump off his back? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, As I feel myself going through the roof, grab his arm. <laughs> uh, it's your fault. Uh, all right, so uh, actually, you guys. It's, um, it's his fault that you're stupid. Oh, no, he's on my back. Yeah. So he's got a monkey on his back. I got right a gate, literally. Right out of the gate, you guys both roll two d four for damage. Well, um, he, he wants to know whether he can jump off the back when this guy goes to fall. Oh, that's a good question. So um, I will allow a an intelligence check to um, an intelligence check at a DC fifteen. If you can, you're able to jump right off. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> right. So the first thing that's going to happen is just falling through the floor, just the splinters is going to give you 2d4. And then the aggravated damage. Don't forget about the aggravated damage. <laughs> No, five points. Nice were were you in the games yeah. with aggravated damage? No. All right, do you, do you take your damage? Yep, I did. All right, excellent. Sweet five. Right. Yeah. And at that point, um, uh, you're actually, uh, oh, so at that point, um, you guys are going to have to take uh, it'll it'll be so I will roll to see how many floors you fall down if <laughs> these guys don't catch you, All right? So you guys look back in the fog, you see them, and uh, are any of you going to attempt to catch them? Absolutely. All right. So uh, you guys, no. Uh, I can catch, cast feather fall on them. Can I just cast feather fall on them? Absolutely. Yeah. As a reaction. Yeah. So you can cast feather. Uh, so you cast you can cast feather on fall yeah. on one, correct? Well, okay. well yeah, I would cast holding on him, him. But as long as he doesn't fall off. Right? You're right. Absolutely. He failed his fall. He tried right. to chase <laughs> the monkey off. Yeah. All right. So you cast feather fall on him. Um, now, fall. does that fall take? Fall. Yeah, that takes a cantrip for you. Is that right? No, it's a first level spell. Okay. All right. Um, but that does burn a spell for you, or is that? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. There's no more at wills, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. None. All right. So at that point, uh, feather fall has been used, and uh, you go over and you guys pull them out. You know, and then the two of you are like. And so at that point, you finally move forward with the urchin, and I'll set everybody up. All right. It so. Feels like so. <laughs> <laughs> it's a stand. Now, one thing that you feel relieved at is the people that you're meeting. It's clear that they didn't see any of that. <laughs> so at this point, you guys walk out like bosses. You know, you're yeah. clear to us, <laughs> and you guys got to walk through the. You know, it's in the rooftop. There's a little bit of wind. Yeah, uh, you I, know, the the moonlight is glinting <laughs> off of your swords. Yeah, exactly. And then, so. They didn't see any of that. All right. So, so how dark is it? it? It's it. Um, there is moonlight, so it's uh, it's essentially a full moon. Okay. So and yeah, like I said, the the moonlight is glinting off your swords. Well, I mean, is it is it? This is a very romantic sort of atmosphere. Like, can, can we see <laughs> clearly? Yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, you can you can see clearly. Oh, okay. All right. So Funny basically, idea, there's actually a stone. Idea. There's a stone <laughs> area here. <laughs> it clearly yeah, goes all. Like, like, it's it's actually a, like here. essentially a stone, a small yeah. stone keep. And there were wooden houses built up around it. You guys come forward, and at this point, um, there's uh, there's eight guys surrounding this central figure. 
Um, these red, these all represent the same thing, and they uh, well, actually, I'll 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 bring these guys all separate, and I'll I'll introduce the minions. That actually, they're not minions; they're henchmen. Well, um, the characters, right? Uh, actually, they're actually cohort level. Um, so, so I'll introduce the main guy. So at force, it's really large, um, seven feet tall, about three and a half feet wide. Cloaked figure comes out, and he pulls back his cloak. And it is a um, it is a cat folk, a really large uh, about it's a, a tiger about man size. He's got um, he's white with brown uh, furs and kind of um, splotches all over him just from his fur pattern. And um, you actually recognize him. Do you remember who he is? Mm, it no. is Darsa of Clouder Coutre. And so uh, he comes forward and he, and he says, he says, it is good to see you again, Elioth. Thank you for bringing your compatriots. Uh, Darsa of Clouder Coutre is um, is he is a, f a friend of Queen Derwin's, and more specifically, Queen Derwin uh, in Olmir is Queen of Derwin because uh, uh, Queen Derwin is Queen of Olmir, one of the continents on Thracian, because um, Darsa led 7,000 catfolk slaves in rebellion against the king, King Ederand. King Ederand was deposed, and his daughter, the princess, was made queen because there was no, there was no one else, yeah, no one else to take. And so Ederand and his two sons have been exiled. And this has been going on for about three to six months now. This is about uh, somewhere between three and six months after that event, okay? And, um... And so Darsa comes forward, and um, he he has asked you to bring um, a new group of heroes to accept the proposal for work. Okay, and he paid five hundred gold pieces just for this meeting. All right, uh, and he, he paid the urchin whatever. Right, yeah. <laughs> all right. One. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 All right. And so, yeah. Is so uh, now, well, yeah. Uh, actually, no. The urchin disappears. Thank you. Yeah. So I give Darsa a, a nod and a. Uh, a firm handshake. Yeah. Uh, greetings. It is well met. I'm glad to see you again. Thank you. He says, "Hope you, the tidings are are somewhat good that we are here." For. He says, "If all was well, it never we is. Would, never is." Yeah. It? He says, "If all was well, we would be meeting in a warm inn over meat and mutton. Certainly we're, not. We're on still a dark on night. a roof, right? Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah. Um, where yes. are they? Are they down the courtyard? Uh, no. So you guys are all on rooftops. This okay. is all on the rooftops, and actually. This is a stone keep that's actually 50 feet high. Okay, it's 10 feet above the areas. I, I gave you the 10 foot climb for free because you guys needed it. Right? Uh, <laughs> uh, we don't want to look in front of Just one of us. Right, and, uh, and the stone keep, the, the wooden buildings were built up around it, okay? And so you guys are 50 feet off the ground and there is no one around. Uh, you know, there's no one around. So he wanted this specifically because he didn't really want anybody to witness this talk, okay? And, um, any other questions about your surroundings? Um, do these guys look like you know, shady and unscrupulous, or do they... so? Let me let me explain the cohorts, right? So one, um, I, I split up the NPCs in my in my games as minions, henchmen, and cohort level. Okay, and then also hero and villain. Darsa is a hero. Okay, and that means he's going to be uh, higher than your level, right? And he's fully capable, right? Very powerful hero type. He's essentially like a player character in the same level of detail and power. His cohorts, right, are essentially one or two levels below him. You're not positive what that level is. And he's got eight cohorts with him. These four are all cat people, just like him. And they actually, uh, you know, throw back their robes. And each of them are carrying sim just actually simply a short sword, uh, a short sword and on, on this side. And they have um, a cat's claw symbol here, the same one that Urchin showed you, and then their black cloaks. And they look just like um, Darsa. But Darsa has been doing very well as leader, and so um, and he has attracted other people who are even beyond his own uh, own slave race that he that he is uh, ruling that are now freed. And so these guys, this is a half elf carrying uh, two uh, two scimitars, and this right here is a human. Uh, with a with a shield and a sword, and you have, he has an archer as well. All their um, all their um, weapons are currently sheathed, oh, and good. yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has a female human 
uh, wizard with her with him as well. And um, all, all of them have their hands in, you know, non-aggressive ways. And like this is this meeting is to talk. OK, yeah. and so he's come with a full group of people. You guys roll up and actually um, I'll introduce everyone formally and, you know, in turn. Excellent. You know, okay. Any sort of titles I have to to bandy about, I'll throw them out as well. Right. And actually, so immediately um, the uh, the female wizard comes forward and she says, are you the kineticist? Uh, yes, indeed, I am, lady. She says, I have heard you are the first scion to come over onto Thraceon. Well, I haven't been keeping tabs on everyone else, but perhaps I am. She says, I would be most interested in learning more of what you, uh, of this power source, as it seems to be unique and new to Thraceon. Well, we can talk about it at some time at length in my shop sometime later, perhaps. I look Won't forward to that. Or not a... Uh, Dealing with business. Indeed. I look forward to that. Thank you. I wrote this great book. It's called Dianetics. You can go through these tests and evaluate yourself and see how suitable you are. Personally, I'm not. All right. So that is. Um, uh, uh, and so she gives you her, her name. She is Haley. And she, you know, uh, yeah. And so she's the wizard, uh, the female wizard, who is human wizard, who is interested in learning more about psionics. Okay. And at that point, um, Dar uh, Darcy says, thank you for meeting me here. I truly appreciate it. And at that point, he says, uh, oh, yeah. So he breaks out. He says, and he just kind of goes into, uh, he says, thank you for meeting me here. I, will, I know your time is, is valuable, so I will not dally in, in what I am proposing. As you know, my people were freed five months ago. It says, Queen Darwin has been an excellent noble leader, and we have appreciated all that she has done for us. But we are struggling now for the issue that has come is that um, while while she has been very kind to us and has um, has been has changed everything that King Edoran did, my people were still slaves. Of the people here in this nation for many years and there are there is fraying and friction in many villages and towns throughout this uh throughout this continent and as much as i wish to stay and as much as i wish to build a space for us here i'm not sure that we could do that with peace um we are an aggressive people and i have even now i have uh cat folk who are uh, talking to me saying we should take some of the land with an only that it is owed us for the time that we labored here. And there was many days where I and my brothers and my sisters were whipped. Now, the queen is on their side, right? Absolutely. So, she was the princess when they were enslaved, um, but her father had them enslaved. And now, she, now she's freed all of them. But the, And so Darsa and Queen Darwin are the best of friends, but there are times where the free cat folk are going into shops with a guy who whipped them, you know, like the thousands of people that are dealing, there's a lot so, of friction. Between them. So can, can the queen not grant you land? That is an excellent question. Could, could, could we not just set forth I and mean, the, the 500 gold you pay me, pay us. I will, I will give back to, to purchase su supplies and build a new town. That is the most noble offer. Why, why not just do that? Well, the, I'm sure there are detractors. I mean, I'm not, familiar totally with the politics here, but there must be people against the idea of giving your people land. Especially Probably against giving you uh, freedom, let alone so, land. So, so you are familiar with the ways of any court. Or factions with your, with at, your at own. that, that I, I will true. draw my blade, uh, set it, set it a, a, a flame, and say, let them come! <laughs> he says, Eliath, this is why I asked you to bring new compatriots to aid me. Because Please. they're hot of temper? <laughs> <laughs> no, he says, and, and a blade. I, I have one too. He says, I appreciate your fervor. Please. So I, I uh, yeah. doubt that was the plate. And yeah, I really see it. This is exactly why you are here. He says, to tell the truth, I think you're right. We could go to Darwin and ask for land. But as a leader of my people, I need to lead them. And one of the things I think that we should be doing is not asking the queen for land to be given for us, taken from her own people. But I wish to contract each one of you for three months of your life, for the next three months of your lives. And here's what I propose. I am proposing 
to pay you 1,000 platinum each. And in addition to that, I will grant you one bequest. As you can see, it says each one of these cohorts here um, has an entire group of adventurers just like you. When we leave, uh, I will be setting each one of them to go and grant to gather to gather one more uh, item or task or uh, item or task for you in addition to the thousand platinum. Because what I am about to send you upon is extremely dangerous. So as you adventure for me, they will be adventuring for each of you to return for what you request for the second half of your payment. What I am requesting is, all right, and he says, as you know, we are upon the cult, uh, the continent of Olmir. And Olmir is on the land of Thrycion. And he says, and what I will be requesting from you is that you will go, and uh, he says, to, and I need to bring up a map here. One second. Map. <laughs> Loaded. I'm so getting me a cat princess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the cat puns are like <laughs> thinking about ca having catnip and catnap. Time for a catnap. <laughs> There's a James Bond yeah, here that we go. comes to mind. <laughs> all right, so he says, This is Olmir. <laughs> this continent is the continent of Olmir. Now, um, you guys have been on Thracian for a little while now. And you know that the Ubmerge, the seas that surround this continent, are of course controlled by um, the the, pir the Minotaur pirate lord, um, Kragen Ironhoof. Um, and so where I will be sending you, there will be much danger in this trip. Um, but this continent here is ancient. Edirond was such a terrible king and his father and his grandfather were such terrible kings, that Aeseon, from what I have been able to read, I have a good friend named Harkin, a monk who's taught, began to teach me how to read, um, that there used to be trade and diplomacy between Aeseon and, um, and Olmir, but that has uh, been lacking for at least a hundred years. And so while there has been secret trade ships that have gone back and forth with small amounts of trade, um, only a few people within that within on the Asian side and Olmir side even know each other. The vast majority, there's been no diplomacy and no speaking between the two continents for many, many years. I wish to send each of you to Asian. You will go as my agents. You will return with the following: a weapon, and each each one of you will bring me a different specimen, a plant, a coin. And your journal. You go there for three months. You will travel this land. You will scope it out. And you will return to me with these things. It does not need to be a magical. If they are magical, all the better. But even knowing what types of plants are there, what their currency is, what weapons they use, all of this will be valueless. And most valuable of all will be your journals, which you will keep each day, writing just a few notes into your journals. You will bring these back. Now, each one of you will bring me that. And then as a group, you will bring me one holy symbol and one map. This, uh, um, and you will spend three months uh, there. And, um, and for this, I will pay you 1,000 platinum this evening. And then if you accept this position, you will meet my ship um, in the morning at 8 a.m. And you will before you enter before you enter onto the um, onto the ship, you will name what I will send these men out to get for you, and uh, aliens as well. Um, and he says that is. Um, and he says if you know what you wish to request now, you may tell me. Uh, otherwise, you have the evening to think. Um, when we leave here, we will have no further discussions. You will either be on the ship and go as my agents, or you will not. You may ask whatever questions you have now. What do you plan to do with this information? To tell the truth, um, I will do one of two things. If this land is lit, if this land is ruled by an evil duck spot, if it is uh, roamed by, by monsters and very few people live there, which is quite possible upon Thracian, then I shall take probably a group of 
I shall take all my people, and we shall go over and take it by force. If there are good folk who live along those lands, we will send out a diplomatic team who will, at, who will actually ask to earn land and perhaps pay for tracts of land there. And the reason why I believe this will be better than taking land here is Queen Darwin could give us land, but what she could not do is give us the goodwill of the thousands who slaved, enslaved us here, not just King Edwin kept us as slaves. Um, many of the people here were helpful to us, but many of the people were quite brutal in their in their treatment of us. And so this is what I propose to you. It would be most difficult to turn your cheek to your former oppressors. And that solves the issue of dealing with uh, dealing with them at all. Perhaps you could get the uh, princess to uh, give a goodwill donation towards your cause of getting you over there. I'm sure there would be your detractors and people that want to help you out as well would pay for that. So you can get money from both sides. <laughs> he says, to tell the truth, I understand what you were saying. And uh, he says, you may have a future in uh, um, in court uh, in, in court counsel. He says, but to tell the truth, I think one of the reasons why I'm sending you this night is I wish my independence. I'm done asking uh, Queen Darwin for handouts. I believe our people can stand on our own two feet. You will be aiding with that if you choose to take. I'll step up and uh, remove my helm, and you know I'm wearing uh, dragon scout, red dragon scout armor, and I remove the helm. And when I remove it, you can see that my 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 uh, my eyes actually more look more like a, a serpent's or a dragon's than a human's, and I have scales, you know, spread out on my face here and there, not as much as the dragonborn, but they're like in almost like in patches. And I, I will aid you in this quest. It is a, it is a good it is a good one, but I I already know what I want. It is it is it is a uh, bit of an odd request, I think. But I wish for a wife. A wife? Why? He says from one of yours. Oh, from my from my people. That is most. He says, "Well, I will tell you now. Thank you for uh, for stepping forward, being the first to accept this." He says, "And I will tell you now. There will be uh, many women within the catfolk people." that will be eager to marry any hero that returned and helped us on our first step forward into our own lands. I will, he says, I will begin to spread the word and you shall have your choice when you return. I guarantee it. Excellent. Then let's make this happen. <laughs> that was awesome. Problem solved. <laughs> <That'll be perfect. laughs> uh, uh, All right. You get inspiration for that. That was fantastic. Well, nice. All right. Yeah. Nice. Okay. And so at that point, um, is anybody else going to know what they want to ask for now? Uh, I will tell you right now. Essentially, a very rare item is about the level, a parcel of land. He's taking three months, and you have no idea what's on the other. In fact, you know just the trip to get there on the ship will be highly dangerous. Mm -hmm. So you can absolutely ask for any, almost any, <laughs> asking for any very rare item in the DMG I is believe completely that's legend. logical. Oh. I think his is super awesome. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you guys want trinkets. I just want a wife. Yeah. Uh, and so, and so and, but this is equivalent to a very rare item. She better be able to cook good. <laughs> <laughs> so, are there any other questions before we continue, mm -hmm. uh, or before you break with uh, with Darkside? Seems straightforward. straightforward. We're gonna gather these items you requested, write in our journals. Excellent. Yep, legendary. Mm -hmm. It is legendary. You found yep. it first. All right. This is. Mm -hmm. Oh, what what were you looking for? Oh, I was a holy well, avenger. Well, you can ask for it. I would, yeah. If you're something you really want, especially if you're a paladin. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say uh, a holy a holy sword, a relic that fits my station would be quite a touch. All right. At this point, the uh, half elf they... with the with the two Jesus, I shall gain this for you. You speak of the holy avenger, do you not? I do. He says, uh, "Show me your sign of your position." Now you're a paladin, correct? Mm. It, now, do you have uh, uh, she, your crest pull, on your shield? Yeah, I pull out a, uh, a holy symbol of, of my deity. So, says, how long has your ha, has your blade fought for this god? My whole life, since I could wield a blade. He says, I, have, "I shall have it ready for you upon your return." Wonderful. Absolutely. Now, the reason I'm going to allow that legendary request is it's completely within the line of your character, mm -hmm. so that that makes total sense. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, if you wish to reward me with with bubbles and trinkets, whatever whatever it is that you you wish, but my, mine is a is a path of truth and justice. Mm -hmm. F find 
where where my blade will be needed next, so that I might go there. He says, um, and actually, at that point, he <laughs> says, he comes forward, and he just puts his your hand on your shoulder, and he says, Alistron, you are truly selfless. Um, again, Elias, I, the, the men you have brought forward are, are more than up to the task, and I, I thank you again for, for bringing these men forward. You are, this group is more than I had hoped for. Thank you once again. What can we give for you? Now, if you want a player to play or a player, if you want to take a look through the DMG, see if there's anything you want. Thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So no problem. So at that point, um, if you, uh, we'll say, think over it, and you shall have time. Yeah. Um, and at that point, I will give you my DMG. Hi. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. A pet um, dragon yeah. for you to ride. Yeah. And, <laughs> like Just a little one. All right. So, um, like so at that point, it seems like everybody's on board. Yeah. I, oh, yeah, I'm for this. I I would request uh, some kind of trading rights between this kingdom and your newfound kingdom if you do succeed in, in gaining it. And uh, name it after me. Name it after me. Exclusive trading rights would be excellent. Yes. yes. Excellent. And uh, any type of rare crystals or uh, other rare metals yeah, that you can like, I hey, would enjoy hey. those as well. It's just, I am a leader, so I must. He says I must be wise. I can give you. Would you be willing to take uh, exclusive trading rights for three years? You would be able to put forward any ships you uh, mm -hmm. any ships you wish, and you could contract anyone else. Any other ships that were allowed to carry would have to pay tariff to you. Would have to pay you to carry trade. So oh, wow. you would determine everyone who you traded for three years. Would that be worthy of three months of your time? Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Thank you. All right. And then he lures over the right. crushes That's cool. All right. That's awesome. <laughs> hundred yeah. times. All right. It's like the seven-year patent gap. It's hard to overcome that. That's like you. So you're setting up the India East, in, in, India East trading East company. Trading company. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There you go. I can't think of anything All off right. the top of my head. I want. Hold your head to the floor, but I gotta, I gotta do the selfless power. That was awesome. Yeah. Now, what are your gods? So. I did one that I created for the Griffin Gak world, Morathiel. Morathiel. So, okay. so she's um basically a deity of like um justice and um patricians, so like societal order basically. So being an she's all about being a noble. Patrician? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't I don't particularly favor a, a god, it's like, like any, any domain. Yeah, lawful, yeah, yeah basically, you know, of, anything good you know, in the sense truth, of truth, like justice, or, you know, like, like let, that let, idea let the, of, let the know, light shine the through evil. Here's the cast. Yeah, this type of situation. So my, my, my only symbol is basically like that. just like yeah. this. Okay. Wow. Strict, nice. Strict, strict, strict strict cool. order. Yeah. All right. And there's ten. So that's kind of why the why I wield a a flame tongue. Okay. Wow. Cool. Very good. Okay. All right. I also have a flame tongue. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and my armor has um, it's all sort of etched with symbols of roses with the um, the, the stems bound with chains and there's like these fine filigree chains etched all across it and I've got manacles at my head. Nice. Kind of and that and the wait, manacles wait, say it one more time. Go ahead. Okay, so the um, the armor is all etched with with roses and then the uh, thorny stems are uh, sort of enwrapped in chains and then there's fine filigree chains all along the armor and at my hip i'm wearing manacles that are also they're actually shaped like roses that are, would like go around some of these hands mm -hmm. you know so it's like the roses are bent you know like so they clasp on people wow. yeah and that's actually my holy symbol is the manacles so we're, we're, we're told that you know we don't know what's going to be there and there there could obviously be danger oh yeah absolutely. so i will i will go to to my retainers i've got bren sven and lloyd <laughs> um and then, uh I'm basically going to say, you know, look, you know, you, you know the path that I walk, and da danger is is definitely possible, and you, you know how how well I've treated you. I give you, you know, I, I give you your choice as to whether you wish to, you know, walk in the proverbial lion's den with me, or you know, I will give you the the, the coin to re remain where you where you may until I return, or you may take your leave. That could be some nightmare. I don't have the ability to bestow that. Uh, it's Hello, a thousand platinum goes pretty far. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, by the way, you guys have a thousand platinum at this point, and um, and actually, so is there any other questions before you disperse? 
I don't think so. It's All right. Straightforward. So he's, yeah, he thanks you guys. You just, you disperse. You're able to uh, safely get down to the bottom. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> at that point, uh, or, and you guys are walking through the seats and uh, you pass that's the urchin and you kind of hear him snigger like you're remembering all the falls and all right so all right um so at that point um <laughs> so at that point you guys are going forward uh, and, uh oh and you are talking to Bren, Sven, and Lloyd who are changing if we pass the uh the, the urchin on the way back I'll I'll toss him a platinum Okay, and if you Not would, sure what you can do with it. Um, you are now going it. to use your, you're it. going to make a charisma roll. I'm going to set, um, and actually, it's, um, these guys are, so you have advantage because these guys serve you, and they are more than willing to go. If you get, um, so actually, for every two points over eight, all right, uh, one of them will come with you, all okay. right? And now, you is get persuasion or just charisma? You may use persuasion. So that's 17. All right. So, yeah. So, all three of them are fully on board, and they say, we would not allow you to go without us, Master. No, all right. It's, it's, my it's Fred. There's no, there's no Master. Okay. Guys, if you have the technology. Yeah. So, they just call you by name. You can see yeah. Thank you, Alex. Yeah. We would not allow you to go without us. Going from me to them. All right. And, uh, okay. Excellent. So, at that point, I don't. All right. The economy yeah. of been with me for a while. An issue. You, really spend right. a lot you guys got about five magic. minutes it's to hard. set up for our next scene. Make the choice. Hmm. Yeah, hopefully, yeah, we didn't get too deep into uh, religious talk with uh, Darsa because my deity can be kind of okay with slavery if the if the, if the country wow. allows it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, because it's, it's because of society nobles. order. Yeah. yeah, yeah like it's, wow, that's kind of deep. So, so while while he's setting up, what uh, you know, Ryan kind of described described what he looks like. You know, if we want to do a a, a round robin, yeah, yeah. Great. Sure. that works. Um, Kick it off. That's just, so, all right, well, just you know, nope. uh, you know, I, I'm I'm you know, as a you know human paladin, I'm totally bedecked in in full plate, um, but the 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 plate that I'm wearing seems to be like overlapped with uh, like extra extra protection. Um, you know, our, our our dwarven friend here would would totally no, notice the uh, the dwarven craftsmanship. Uh, you know, oh, you're uh, dwarven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, that's why it's important to you know give all these little the little descriptors here. Um, when you know, when he removes his helm, you know he to totally has the those those boyish good looks. Um, He's you know, but but. You know, strength and looks are definitely his uh, his strong point. So, Belagar's scales have a slightly brassish feel to them. Um, very tall, um, about six foot seven, so taller end of what you expect from a dragonborn. Decked in full plate. Um, uh, really, why? The whole idea here is I'm looking for honor and for a reason to be. Um, I was shunned, shunned by my clan for events outside of my control. And going to find a land of peace for somebody sounds like a good idea. Ah, oh, we're kindred spirits. I'm loved and I'm also in exile for things beyond my control. And uh, you know, and as you saw, as you see, and uh, when you look at my face, you see the the, the, the little red scales that, that are they kind of form patterns on my face and the, the slitted eyes and I have no control over this thing that happened to me. The blood of the dragon surfaced in in me as a as a young lad. So ever since I've been looking for my place in the world, traveling the wilds, I am uh, adept in scale mound made of red dragon scales i have a shield that is made of similar material as well um you know i usually uh you know have a, a walking staff quarter staff that i use as my my focus i have scimitar and dagger but looking at me i do not look like as one like one that should actually be wielding them so i'm very very skinny tall and skinny um you might recognize the dwarven craftsmanship of the 
of the girdle I wear around around my uh, waist is very, very broad and, and wrought with dwarven runes and uh, imagery. Almost like it's a belt of dwarven kind. Mm -hmm. Almost like that. I'm liking this guy more and more. <laughs> well, you don't like my dwarven plate, but you like his dwarven belt, huh? I yeah. literally have to like him more. Oh, and I do, and I do have an impressive beard. Uh, you know, all, one to make one of the dwarven folk proud. But again, it is twinged through with like it almost looks like uh, metallic threads of red, and in my hair as well. Nice. Yeah. So as I described before, I'm kind of a tall and brawny half elf with immaculately well kept hair, uh, maybe. Few braids in it, a, a bow kind of in there um, going on. Um, he's got yeah, like dangling bit, bits of chain that come off of the the, um, the full plate. And um, <laughs> huh, hilarious. Uh, so and uh, when they're visible, he's he has uh, four imps in tow with him. Uh, one that tends to ride on my shoulder, and the other that kind of drag behind. Yes. And uh, I go wherever um, devils need to be brought to heal, and wherever I, I am, I belong. So, uh, Scott. Yes. The, uh, Master Maker Arborum Holdenhale, and uh, I'm a hill dwarf. So, um, you know, average size for a dwarf. i am uh, got red-brown hair. It seems to be really thick, but it's actually very, very tiny braids, and they're all bound together in, a, uh, in two braids that come down with little cuffs on them and uh they the i have a kind of like a medallion that i wear that looks like the side of a barrel uh made out of wood and it has a crystal anvil and a crystal hammer set in it and the crystals are kind of like a bluish green looking and uh i also have, you know i've got a cloak but i also have you can see under that the the, the kind of like half plate with the uh with the uh other bits to it you know like the leather and whatever <clears throat> and i have a a pack over my back not like you know like a giant book bag but just like a simple kind of like sack like a duffel bag now on you are there are there any symbols that indicate you are a kineticist no okay good to know i think this is kind of like my focus focus right crystal stuff in my in my medallion that i wear okay so it's it's similar to an arcane focus yep so that's perfect Okay. So uh, I've got a uh, rules question for you here. There's, uh, yes. Two, two, two different sides. Uh, great weapon fighter, uh, the, the fighting style allows you to, when you roll damage, reroll ones and twos. Now, the rules as interpreted as I look at it say you roll your weapon damage, and then if you're any other added dice, like smites or, you know, extra qualities, I wouldn't interpret it as you get to reroll ones and twos on those. Other DMs have said, oh, if you're smiting or like your flame tongue, you, know, you roll it all together and anything in that quote unquote weapon damage, reroll ones and twos on anything. What is what is your what is your take on that? My take is you absolutely get to roll it on extra dice, and I highly um, prefer that. And the reason why is I am using proficiency die uh, rule. So there is an optional rule within the DMG that says you do not get your plus three for proficiency. For a plus two, you roll a d4. For a plus three, you roll a d6. For a plus eight, you roll a d8. With this rule, if you have anything that allows a roll of a plus one on that roll, you get that reroll on your proficiency die as well. So if you roll a one on the proficiency die, you can trigger it. Okay. So okay. anytime you have any kind of reroll power, it will reroll, and, and you're using your proficiency die because I I highly encourage. I really like the optional proficiency die rule. And so I want to give that benefit right. as well. So now we, we, we use that when we're rolling uh, any, skills or when we're rolling attack. Or anytime you use your proficiency die. Anytime you get your proficiency bonus, okay. you roll your proficiency die. Now, I don't. I highly prefer, it, you know, as a favor to the GM, please do it as, as often. I know there's some player who are like, oh, I, I think I'm going to lose out if I don't get my straight three. I would much prefer you um, you roll a die, and so I like this coming up because there it gives a mechanical benefit to using okay. the extra die. Yeah. Okay. So we're die. a plus four. That's a die eight. Yeah, that's exactly right. Okay. And if you have expertise, you roll two die eight. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's it's highly beneficial to roll the extra dice rather than just taking. Yeah, I yeah. kind of maybe, but you've never seen me roll dice. Right <laughs> and the reason why is I think the coolest thing in D, in fifth edition is the two d twenty. 
And so uh, I love the idea of getting more dice. More dice. Well. Absolutely. Right. That's so, why yeah, dice are half the reason we're here, right? So if I decide, yeah. uh, okay, I, I make an attack roll, I've hit, and I'm smiting, I go like that. And if I roll a one on all of those dice, so let's see, this one, this one, and this one, would all get re-rolled, yep. even though that's my weapon. Oh, my piece, yes. Piece. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the power should be powerful. Uh, that's hey, what I say. I, I, I just... Yeah. Um, it's something yep. that affects this yeah. character strongly. The other reason why I'm more than more than um, comfortable doing that is we are in Paragon tier, right? And uh, so so um, you're going to need it, all right? <laughs> all right, <laughs> so at this point, we are WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get except for their weapons, all right? So you're looking at this ship, right? And then there's a small, uh, and here's the reef. Here's the, uh, um, the wharf, right? And there is a small, much cooler than this boat, uh, kind of an outrigger, a fast... Uh, boat that is tied off to the large ship right now, okay, and um, and actually across the across the this side you see the silent wind, and this is your first view of a minotaur. So actually, the minotaurs rule the seas of Thracian. Nice, all right, and uh, and actually, um, this is a honorable captain of the silent wind, and. Um, and actually, when you check in at the wharf, they say, "Oh, go see Captain Brian Bale um, of the of the Silent Wind," and they they point you to his direction. Um, but actually, there uh, the Minotaurs rule through the Pirate King, uh, Craig Ironhoof, right? And uh, so he has many ships uh, that that uh, go along around Olmir. And, and I tell you, since he's a Pirate King, he's less honorable. Yeah, uh, <laughs> actually, it's a great question. Like uh, you really, um, people don't really talk about him in Thracian. One of the reasons why is Thracian doesn't do much trade. Mm. Like a they, you know, because the king was so terrible with diplomacy, right. they never almost never they never really suffered from the pirate kings. So you just heard tales of so, the pirate so kings. I imagine it's not too hard to on route to here to grab some kind of book that we could be able to have as a journal. Extremely wise. <laughs> that was a very wise choice. <laughs> All right. So yes, you can bring um in fact I will get uh, that was an extremely wise choice. So this is going to be a long trip. Right now, actually, in game time, it may very, may, may very be short, but you're going to have a month, two months, or three months. And in a minute, uh, actually, when we get there, you will have a choice of actually gaining an entire skill during that mm -hmm. journey. So, yes, bring the books, bring the manuals, mm -hmm. but there are going to be other choices to do as well when you get on there. So, if you're if there was something you wanted to work on, you absolutely have time to get that stuff on. All right, okay. I'll the, sh the, uh, the short of the long is. I will buy as much raw material as I possibly as possible. can with my thousand gold, oh, my thousand right. platinum pieces. All right, I have, and I stick have it a, in the hole. I have a question. Um, my, my retainers simply come come with me. One of them is, you know, pretty much takes takes care of my mount. Another one is, you know, responsible for my gear, and the other one kind of helps out wherever else is needed. Um, Ooh, what's your mount? I have a war horse. Yeah, uh, all the all your mounts are going to be brought. Right okay, there. there's not there's not yeah. enough problems for no, not at all. It's a large ship. Um, yeah. So if we're going to be at sea for how long? Uh, you are going. Oh, uh, at least a month. At right, least so a month is is you know beyond just so you, know, you know all all of the basic you know oh you know books and things to to write you know is there enough food for? It's a great everything? point. So actually, you see. Um, so everybody, make an intelligence check right oh, now. My phone, yeah, all right, hold on. Uh, and actually, you can use knowledge. Uh, if anybody has knowledges, let me know what your knowledges are. I got our Canna. I'm making the DC right now. I got history. Uh, you cannot use our Canna. That won't be uh, history. Can, no. History will be useful. Okay. You mean to do right. well, You can use that. Go ahead. Rolls, right? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you have your proficiencies, go right. ahead. So I have. Oh, I have to use the D8 for yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Eight twenty in Arcana. Now you always have the choice to take your your. Uh, is there anybody here who doesn't want to use the D the the dice? I'll use it. It's just yeah, yeah. yeah I, have, I have a nineteen on the history check. Can you? Nice. You made it. I have by a three. Started uh -oh. protract the conversation on it. Can you recap the dice for me real quick? Yeah, you got it. So what happens is you're going to make a D twenty yep. the way you always did, right? And you get your attribute bonus. Okay. In fifth edition, there's now a proficiency. Okay. okay, so if you are so if you have a skill, mm -hmm. you are proficient in that, yes. and you would get. Let, let's let's let you bonus. use a, his uh, yep. his own character sheet for example. All right, you have athletics. Yep. Yep. So you have a is that a seven strength? Oh, sorry, it's plus seven. 
Oh, you know, because oh, you, you're wearing a, a belt. Yep. Okay. Yep. So you have a plus seven strength strength modifier. Mm -hmm. So then on your character sheet, you have seven plus four, which is why you have a, pl a plus 11. Mm -hmm. So the way what he's suggesting is, is when you go to roll your, prof your proficiency in athletics, you would have 18 plus six plus seven. And the reason you're getting the D8 is because you have a plus four. Rather than getting the flat four... You get a D8, which can make you go all the way up, but okay. you can get a one or you can get an eight. Right. Okay, cool. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I do too. So, yeah. It's like gambling. Yep. Yeah. And, and one of the reasons Except why for I'm doing this. Except loses a finger, maybe. One of the, the front of this is really yeah. nice. One of the reasons why I'm doing this is I actually um, followed along as they were building it, and they actually really wanted to do this, but they thought player might freak players out. So they actually rolled it back and made it an option. Anybody that liked 3.5 would probably not like the position. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm 50-50 yeah, I'm fi I'm yeah. on it. I like it. Yeah. Well, I love it, and I think it's fun. Yeah, it's right there as an as a, an optional GM option. So, yeah. So 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 always remember if you're skilled in it, you get that proficiency die as well. So you said so arcana. Less than yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, no, arcana will not help. Okay. Do you have any other knowledges? Mm, I've got insight. That's about it. I will allow that. Okay. Absolutely. So yeah. that Do you have be... jack of all trades? Yeah. So you're always at least half proficient. Yeah. Okay. Well, I yeah. actually have insight. So is there something particular that I should roll for? I guess we'll... uh, you can roll your insight, uh, and your, oh, I've set the DC. Right. Go ahead. Well, right. so oh no, one. Okay. Okay. What's your so total? So that would be. Uh, oh goodness, I'm going to read the book. Uh, fourteen. So you needed a sixteen. That's a fail. A now, that's weirdly, and now I appreciate that because you lost that because if you had taken your flat bonus, you would have made it. Am I right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So thank you for using the dice. I know that gets harsh sometimes. I have a twenty inside. Uh, uh, okay. Oh, yeah, perfect. Too. Uh, so you made it, and did you make it? I uh, I believe I did. Yeah. Um. So that's a fifteen with the dice, and then the, with the roll, that's a uh, nineteen. Okay. All right. Um. You have a nineteen. You made it. You did not make no. it. An eight. An eight. Okay. All right. So one. Here's people. the answer to your question. <laughs> there is actually. Uh. You you look over, and there are there are um men who are bringing the um who are actually bringing the oh actually. There are two men and two Goliaths who are bringing the, um, the, cr the, the crates on. And so you see there are lots of cured meat, lots of cheese, right? Um, and there's, uh, ca um, there's lightning, meadow, uh, lightning meadow mead being brought, some, some casks of lightning meadow mead being oh, brought nice. on. Some of my favorites. And, uh, and you see that they're extremely well packed. There's wax on many of them. And so it looks like they are provisioned well. For a long journey, and there'll be plenty of protein for everybody. You won't be on on hard tack or anything like that. Looks like they're provisioned well, but there's one thing, okay? But you guys know on long journeys, there's not a lot. There's not a lot of room for, and they are taking some fresh fruit just to to enjoy on the beginning, right? But there are eight goats that are being brought on. Hmm. So you need you notice eight goats. You are looking around as well, and here back here, yeah. there is on the bottom area. You see, you see that there's lots, uh, you know, basically the ship is being boarded, yeah. right? And you guys actually see there's a few more passengers coming, right? Do you see that there's one room with some dark shades? And as you're walking past, there appears to be a figure in one of the rooms. There's somebody already on the ship. And everyone moving around on the ship like they know the ship and, they, and they've been there, they're all minotaurs. But this figure is not a minotaur. It's too small. So there's someone who's already boarded the ship. Okay. All right. So with the and, and they're in like a stateroom. Okay. With that with that twenty insight, is there anything that like the crew would enjoy to have that doesn't look like it, it would be like there? it's being provided? Like that's, like like there's something that they would like that doesn't seem to be there. Oh, uh, that's a great question. Um, More need. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I've got uh, dice. The only the only thing is uh, persuavins. So persuavins are fruit on Thracian. And actually, if you're a true uh, a true native of Thracian, which are extremely rare, they actually when you take a bite of them, they actually act as a, the same way a healing potion would. But they're absolutely delicious, and everyone loves them. But they're very expensive. They're actually a gold piece each. So if you were to bring those on, Minotaurs, everybody loves Parswalin fruits. Okay. So How many people does it look like should be on our boat? Right, great question. It's a crew of six. Uh, I'm sorry, six on this and two on the outrigger. Right, 
Um, so there's six on the large boat, and there's two on the on the outriggers. And in addition to that, um, one of the people on here is a uh, is a, one of the minotaurs is uh, is a caster and has created six additional constructs that are like, and the constructs are knots are are essentially knots and pieces of wood from like from the ship itself and so um they actually when they're when they're collapsed they just collapse in little corners over here but he actually animates them and so it's actually got twice as large a crew but half of them are constructs made from knots and pieces of of wood from the ship okay so there's eight people plus the five of us right oh right. and a group of six another adventuring group is now boarding and i'm going to introduce them right now okay so uh, let's go ahead do right, so that's 13 so if we could get like a creep so all right there's a, that's essentially 20 so can i is it possible to buy 40 of these things yeah absolutely okay. yes done all right uh yeah so go ahead and mark off your 40 and oh. i'm going to introduce you to do they keep well uh parts robin fruits they keep for about three days and that, in fact, yeah, uh, yeah. So you guys will enjoy well, them so you, at the beginning. Well, no, I mean, I'm just saying we each get I, we each get two. We one today, one tomorrow, and we're good. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, I would buy more, but for the fact. No, that you're right. Eat. Yeah, yeah, they really, That's a good yeah. Call, yeah it's one of the reasons why they're so valuable. Is there anything yeah. that they get dried or anything like that? It's a hard uh, first Oh no, you can't get parcels and dried. Although you may have just thought of a million coin idea there. So new dry wait wait and you'll be shipping them. So uh dehydrate the parcel. I'm gonna definitely go and uh make sure I have my journal and whatnot. But uh on my way I'll stop by uh and grab for for the party that bakery with the really good bread. That's awesome. So have it out of the Oh wait 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 but um hold on one second. But Arbrum is thinking really should I go? I could start right now on Parswabin smoothies. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to introduce the um, the uh, the adventuring team that is now joining as well. You see Yildin and Arvin. That's Yildin and Arvin. By the way, my printer broke. That's why I got my laptop. Okay. This just makes it all feel high tech. Yeah. Yeah. If we were playing Shadowrun, this would totally feel in place. Yeah. Except for the Yildin. tech would be better than the tech in the game. Yeah. Yildin and Arvin. Yeah, it's true. Actually. I Dude, first edition Shadowrun is edition hilarious. Are running? Uh, <laughs> I got a got, We got a million games. <laughs> you. I'm loving it. It's really sweet. Though. That's nice. All right. Um, so that was Yildin and Arvin. Uh, these are guys are all an adventure group just like you. This is Irvin and Liam. That shield is massive. Yeah. Hmm. All right. And. The darker part of the group, Ian and Morlanthin. Yeah, I like him. Yeah, <laughs> Ian's Morlanthin just looks morose. <laughs> Ian looks a little like, hmm. He looks a little evil. Of course, you guys have a dude with imps surrounding him. So, yeah, like, yeah. yeah, but people don't see that. So yeah. not really surrounding right. them. They just happen to be it's around. Right. Well, when they go invisible, so, when I want them to be outside. You uh, you had mentioned that we can, you know, learn something on the voyage. Um, well, what are you allowing as, as as purchasable? Well, I will tell you right now, if um, you will have enough time to gain an entire skill. Right. Well, I mean, right. like so, you know, so, some DMs say you can only get knowledges and languages. Other DMs say you can get, you know, any anything. Any pretty much any skill you can pick up a new knowledge. You can pick up a uh, now. Tell me a skill if you're like horse riding, that might be a little challenging. <laughs> we take turns yeah. with Ted's horse. Right. So, so uh, look at the skill sheet and think because you're going to have enough time. And so, right now, you can begin thinking about an entire skill that you can learn. Right. And uh, think about you will, you know, it, and but we're also going to get there because you may decide to use your time in other ways. All right. But we'll, we'll, we'll determine if that's the case. So, at this point, you guys go forward. David, um, hold on one second. Luth the Exile comes forward and wait, you know what? Uh, is he, he's human, but with a beard, right? Yes. Oh, nice. Okay. Dave is a human with a beard. Yeah, actually, there you life. go. All right. Well, he has okay. a mighty dwarven beard. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, All right, so yeah. So that's cool. I, I, I first I thought for was a dwarf, but I, I got it. So Luth the Exile, he, you walk up first, right? And um, so you're a fairly large character, you were saying, right? I'm very skinny. Skinny. Tall and skinny. Interesting. Interesting. All right. 
So it, you know what? I'm going to do this anyway. Right. So you actually come up forward, and right out of the way. So you're actually coming up the gangplank. Mm -hmm. You actually walk up onto the onto this here, and the captain, Captain Brian Bale, sees you, and um, and he a big smile comes over his face, and he starts to um, like move his hooves, and he starts to run right, and he has no weapons. He starts to run right towards you. What do you do? With, and actually putting his shoulder down. I wild shaped into a chipmunk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you wild shape into a chipmunk, run right between his legs, and uh and he laughs and turns around and he goes, Oh, he says, I was expecting you to be more stout. No problem. He says, <laughs> Welcome to my ship. He says, So you are a druid, correct? I am. Thank you for the welcome. <laughs> he says so happy to be aboard. <laughs> Can you speak as a chipmunk? Is that what you're well, no, you have to speak? You have to speak in a high pitched voice. I start squeaking at him first, and I go go back. He says, Could you change into a crow? I cannot. He says, uh -huh. But I look forward to uh I look forward to frolicking among the waves. Uh, as a dolphin. Really? He says, what could you transform into? Oh, uh, with that, I just jump off the side as a dolphin and turn into a dolphin into there. And he goes over and he goes, and he like claps his, you know, he claps his hands together and like stamps his hooves. And he's like really excited. And he says, he says, most excellent. He says, please come forward, introduce yourselves. Welcome to my ship. And at that point, um, rather than go through all of it, he actually gives you guys a really warm welcome. He makes sure he understands both your names and then he introduces you to everybody on his ship. And he introduces himself to as Captain Brian Bale, okay? And then um, uh, a Minotaur comes up. She climbs out of the outrigger. This outrigger looks really fast, okay? And also, strangely, it's not oar and it doesn't have sails, right? And so you're kind of like, hmm, how's that going to move, right? And it looks like a, and it's all made of black wood with with um, silver, uh, painted silver lining on it, right? And... Um, the the uh the your vessel female... has a silver lining <laughs> all vessels have a silver lining <laughs> the uh the female um minotaur who comes oh, wow. up she her um her sailor's outfit has the same lining as the boat and you can you can and like the way like when she comes off she's really careful like so when she's on the outrigger she carefully steps up onto that first you know area and leaps from her outrigger to this ship and then, but as soon as she's on the ship, she's like clomp, 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 clomp. So you can see that, like, that's her she's baby. About it, yeah. yeah, that's that's her baby. Like, the, the ship is whatever. But I, but I, her her, I say, um, you uh, you treat your ship as well as I treat my harp. Ah, your harp. Th that looks much a fine instrument itself. He says, thank you. I crafted. He just says, I crafted it myself. Um, she says, so you are able to play song. I am. Yeah. That is most welcome on these long journeys. She says, wonderful, wonderful. I'm eager to hear many of your songs and perhaps tales as well. Well, I am not much of a, a bard, but I can sing a little and, and play Sorry. well enough. Um, so she says, I'm Gorvisi. And so she introduced herself as first mate Gorvisi. Um, and I have a out, out of character que or, uh, question. So is that from your background? I oh, know you're a knight. So that's just a... It's just well, I did pick up proficiency in it. Uh, Perfect. Nice. That's really good. Oh, I see somebody who doesn't have bar levels but still has an, an instrument. That's excellent. All right. So, any questions before you guys get on the road? So, as I, as I you know get on the ship, I you know I, I present the the, the crate. I mean, this is for you know all all to share. I'm I'm I've heard rumors that you know there isn't a soul alive who doesn't love these. Oh, he says that's fantastic, and uh, and he goes. Please, uh, Yuldin, and he calls over the other group. He says, this other fine adventuring group will be adventuring with us. Would you be generous enough to share with them as well? It is, it is for all. All right. You know, they, don't, they won't keep long, so you know, we each have one today and one tomorrow. That, that should take care of the lot. Uh, I, uh, oh, let me see to this. Uh, I clap. My servitors appear. They go get a bowl and go serve to everyone. Um, and then very at the very last, they can have one of mine, they can share it. Nice. So, uh, <laughs> but, but they know the proper order is to serve everyone else first. That's awesome. You have inspiration. Yeah, thank you. Um, absolutely. That's great, great um, extra addition there. So uh, Ian and Morlanthin and um, Liam, the scholar, and Irvin, uh, he's also a knight like you guys. And then Arvin, the fighter, 
and uh, Yuldin the Rogue, they all come forward. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, Morlothin is clearly a barbarian, and Ian is a ranger. Right? You can tell just by their gear and how they're geared out. Uh, they all come forward and they say, that is very generous. Thank you. And they all introduce themselves, right? Um, they appear to be uh, an adventure group just like you guys, but third level, right? So way, way down on the on the chain. So much, we can much. tell they're inexperienced compared to... Yeah, only compared to you guys. I mean, they're, you know, they're third level characters. They don't walk but, with as much confidence. Right, that's exactly right. And actually, to tell the truth, um, actually, Arvin, the female fighter, she walks with a lot of confidence. Um, but she can't back it up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, she walks with a lot of confidence. The only thing that you can tell is like you look at the way her the angle her sword is at, and you're like, no, no. Like the, I wore my sword like that five years ago. The angle's way too wrong. <laughs> the rigging's all out of place. Yeah, yeah. Right. So she 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 definitely carries herself well, but she's got a lot to learn. At some point, right. privately, I'll give her some pointers. All right. <laughs> so at that <laughs> at that point, anything else before you guys move out? All right. So at that point, all um, so uh, one of the wizard um, minotaurs comes forward, and uh, actually, I'm sorry, sorcerer or minotaur uh, brings forward the constructs. Okay, and uh, and the constructs, you know, bring up the sails, and the other ones, uh, you know, start pulling in the anchor, and uh, and actually, uh, you guys come out, and then at that point, um, you could see that Captain Brian Bale is well respected because um, uh, many of the many of the wharf docker. Uh, Dock workers come over, and even uh, many of the kids, you know, there. It's like a, it's, it's not a school day. They come out. They're all waving me goodbye, and you guys come up onto the, onto the rails, and everyone, you know, waves goodbye, and, uh, and they're all, you know, really glad to see you guys off. Um, and at that point, you guys go out, and uh, you also realize that you have just left. You are leaving Thraciant to go to the continent of Asiant, where Darsa has sent you. And you did not check in with um, with Queen Darwin, so you realize even as you wave, the Queen Darwin is has no idea that he has sent a group of adventurers to scout a new continent for him and his people. But he probably wants to not voice that. Right. Right. Yeah, well, exactly. he's the only one that has contact. With That's the court, true. Right? That's exactly so. right. You guys were you guys were in Thracian for a very small. We're in Old Mir for a very. Well, small I mean, like it time. was. It was pretty clandestine yeah. the way he had us. Go. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, and I actually, so I was only the only point I was making is actually you, you honored what he was trying to accomplish. Yeah. yeah. All right. So uh, and you know and none of you got any idea that he was lying. Like he, you know, and and also everything <laughs> that you've heard and the way he's been carrying his people, he really truly does wish to be independent, not uh, not to to take anything from anyone. He just wants to be independent from Darwin, not because he dislikes Darwin. But he wants his people to stand on their own two right, feet. Right. All right. So have we traveled and fought together? Um, Great question. Enough? Right. So you are now linked to two groups. <laughs> uh, Iliath, you are linked to the, the, the other group. These guys, you have all adventured together. What world did you... So you have adventured with all of them, right? Mm -hmm. And called them all together. Uh, and so what world links the two of you? Right? And so... Uh, and I'm just going to go around... Where did you adventure with Elioth? Uh, I, I'm, you know, I, I didn't create this guy with enough, you know, linked backstory because I wasn't certain where. So you I'll were list running. them off: Calamar, Greyhawk, Eberron, um, Dark Sun. <laughs> well, uh, certainly this guy would not be in Dark Sun. <laughs> so which one of those? Griffin Gap. Oh, or Faerun. Could could you no? Know, do we want to say that we're from Griffin Gap? Or Griffin Loft. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah Absolutely. I actually, I made, I took, imported my deity from the, our world. Yeah. So, yeah. so absolutely, you, you are, uh, yeah. no, not at all. You are straight out of Griffin Gaff. Oh, so and, we're all from that? Or just, no, no, okay. just him. So he's a plane. Yeah, he's a plane. Yeah, we're actually going to go around, mm -hmm. and actually, I need to take one minute. And hold on. That, that's it for a plane. Yeah. That fits his concept a little bit more, you know. Either, yeah, absolutely. You know, either Griffin Gaff or just straight from from here. Anybody remember where skills is in the B, in the PHP? It's under ability scores checks. It's really weird. It, but no, front? it's in the back. It's, Got it. Thank you. It's, before it's weird to find specific information there. Yeah, it kind of makes sense they put it there. But yeah, where they list all the different ability scores that helps. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. All right, and yeah, perfect. Okay. Yeah. So if um, we were to have adventured together, it's probably easier just to be from the same place. All right. So. Cheers. 
off my screen. You have so when you were there um, in Griffin Gaff, the two of you were on. Um, yeah, absolutely. You did, the two of you were on an adventure together where um, you fought a, um, a person who used hawks as his as his weapons. And so the two of you, the only way to defeat him was to gain animal animal handling. So you now both have animal handling as a skill. And also you are linked, Griffin Gaff, both of that is where you guys have been. So you two are linked together. I've already got animal handling. Oh, okay. You have double animal handling. Uh, yeah, so would that make you specialized? Yeah, it's up to you. Yeah, so yeah. expertise absolutely. on that. And the reason why is you didn't pick it. I did. All right, so you're specialized. All right. What world? Eberron, and if you don't know what these worlds are, let me know. Eberron, Calamar, uh, Ravenloft, um, yeah, uh, Dark Sun, Dark Sun, Dark Sun, and uh, or Faerun. Um, and am I forgetting it? Uh, there's, I think there is a, a handful of other ones, but not many. Yeah. Yeah. Birthright, Dark Sun, could start at the beginning. Let's start with Eberron. Sure, uh, Eberron. That's a great place to be I'm from. So, Eberron as well. All right. Way, um, so. so, you uh, you can write this down now. You have a dragon mark. Oh! Uh, <laughs> a dragon born right. with and a dragon mark. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, Where are you from? It's very appropriate. Uh, there's a special. Um, te uh, actually, uh, after the game, I'll send it to you. And uh, okay. there's a special like supplement that goes into dragon marks. Are pretty cool. I want to. I want to be from Eberron, but I want to be from the islands of Aragessen. I don't, I don't know if it's dragon right. Yeah, so, dragon Aragessen. Aragessen. Yeah. Tell me about those isles. Right, so, uh, well, it's mostly tribal, and it's ruled by the dra by dragons, and uh, nice. and, and basically the, the people there worship the dragons. So, um, um, but you were exiled for being dra a dragon, like. Yep. Uh, <laughs> they're like you got. You're you flying too far. No. You do now. You're flying right, too far, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. since since dragon marks typically have to be linked to a race, is he getting pick? Well, actually, we can't do it now because there's too much to explain to him in the game. Yeah. So afterwards, can you work with him? I can, and, I can yeah. do it. Do it oh, you want, oh, you want to do it? Go I ahead. Got the sheet right actually, here. you know what? You guys go ahead and work with him. Get him set up. And uh, yeah. So, he, I mean, does he get his, his choice? Because like Dragonborn don't typically have Mark. Yeah, he's right, Dragonborn. He can't, yeah. They don't really have Dragonborn. So it's even more unusual. Average. I will, yeah. Uh, yeah that's oh, true. God. That's, that's even more work. It's not just picking the ones I made up. should be average. He's right. Reference yeah. a Nerdarchy article. Did yeah. you write it? I did. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. What do you got? Uh, I was going to be from Eberron. As as from, Eberron. Uh, from Eberron as well. Yeah. Okay. Conduit? And I'm, I was oh. I actually have never played an Eberron before at all. Oh, uh, get out. Get out. <laughs> I'll be right there. All right. So, so um, pick you, a spot for Master Maker Eberron. Um, so you have knowledge history, okay? Okay. Uh, with um, specifically with um, information for the realm of Zoriat. In the realm of Zoriat is where um, the Living Gate now exists in oh, Eberron. All right. They actually brought it in from from the other from the you other. Say, did you say you Zoriat? Yeah. Zoriat. That's the madness realm. Realm of Zoriat. I know. <laughs> well, yeah. I do have deep. Speech. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So that's how you guys are linked. That's how you know each other. All right. And at this point, you guys are uh, are going forward. Okay, so uh, you guys are out at sea, and you spend. Uh, you sp and now, what do you spend your first day doing? Yeah. Well, just one thing that they might from if they've traveled with me. One thing they might know, a thing I tend to do when I'm fighting, is I drop a globe of darkness centered on myself that for some reason I'm able to see in, and um, so but it becomes pitch black around me. So they oh, might wow. not want to be right next to me when that happens. Um, but other than that. Um, yeah, I just spend my time, you know, playing my harp, helping out occasionally when needed to be. But I kind of take this as like a pleasure cruise. There you go. Yeah. Where do you uh, where do you spend your time? Do you spend your time on the outrigger? You're more than welcome on the outrigger because Gorbisi really enjoys your playing. I'll play the harp for her. There. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So you're on the outrigger, and um, and uh, what do you spend your time? I, I, the first thing I'd like to talk to the captain. Yeah, okay. He seems he Prime seems mail. a little. Uh, little uh overjoyous for a minotaur um, <laughs> how many minotaurs do you know <laughs> several actually uh, uh what are you gonna spend your time doing okay i believe i i believe it's like half my druid level in uh in hours i can spend in wild shape a day so um that was an hour 
And maybe there's now. That's what I'm not sure. I was just looking at. I'm going to spend most of my time, as much of my time as I can. Oh, it's just a short rest. So I'm going to spend as much time as I can in as a dolphin. Nice. Um, so living amongst the ships. I keep another book. Um, that's basically a log of everything that my retainers shan't do. Like, it's it's kind of like retainers uh, shan't, uh, shan't like uh, waggle their genitals at anyone, or like all these different things that they can't do. So one of them will be no poaching my companion who happens to be an animal, uh, because so and that book is as if law, like they yeah, can't we'll do, do that can't thing do once it's written. That's awesome. So it has a bunch of writing in the margins. I write really tight in there because I have to write a lot. Gotcha. So that's anytime awesome. they do yeah, something I don't want to do for this or treat. whatever, it goes in there. Gotcha. Yeah. That's awesome. What do you guys spend your time doing? Uh, well, roll um, a d12. You're going to do this. Like, look around, kind of take my craftsman eye to the to the place do a and uh, see if I can't improve yeah. anything. Yeah, yeah. 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 Especially if he's interested in one getting something that really can't be made easily. So I want to like kind of that because I don't know enough about ships. Yeah. So it's kind of like a new learning experience for me, and uh, I want to see if there's anybody that actually has like a some type of uh, tool proficiency that I'm not. I'm not. Oh, uh, you have the spell in. All right. Uh, you know, kind of like as a trade, like maybe they want to learn something that oh, I know. Awesome. Maybe I'll learn something they Ten. they they know. Excellent. And you okay. Have to spell non Let's go. So I'll go with you first while they work on that. Okay. All right. So, um, so you he says, says one of the things he says is works. often there's nowhere no for. Tattoo. We have these nice state rooms, and it has them built. Um, mm -hmm. and he, he's actually, like, uh, and I actually, you know, it's like a really, really yeah. large. Yeah. Really yeah. large. Yeah. There's nothing like, like there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Somewhere, yeah. Yeah. somewhere. But there's no way for them to put books. Many of the nice things beyond night level, or nice level beyond water. That's why it's mess. It can be like so. If you had shelves, it would be like on your shoulder and that. Would you be able to do that? Chest and up to the neck. So you have to determine where you want to develop some shelves for you. And I could also make it so that the entire it covers a seal in such a way. That would be most um, kind. Thank you. He says, says excellent. I appreciate it. Looks that. like he's got a whole thing. You then go down. I was imagining the ship's going sore. To sore. I don't yeah. have any holes cut out of all the rooms. Um, everybody's um, you know, uh, to make it there. Easy. Yeah. Everybody's uh, uh, way to way did it right? was. I just come gave and you walk across this one room and you see inside the room. There's uh, actually you can see that he's got uh, so really good each job of these the abilities. Uh, he's had the best craft and work on it. And there's actually a glass you window can cast once with a um, when you finish a hold iron iron rods, you get the back. Uh, okay. like panels uh, and then glass. And in one of the rooms is a woman and that. she's sitting in a black three. dress and she's yeah. a black veil really over her dress. So you're just like fixing shelves and you see her room and her room is the next to be done. What do you do? And all, and now, so, yeah. Have I been just knocking on the well, entranceways kind of thing? Actually, well, you did that for the first two, but you realized you know everybody on the ship, and so you, because you didn't realize this, he saw it. You realize you're startled. You're like, oh, there's somebody else on the ship, right? Huh. And now, also though, it doesn't. This lady doesn't look like oh, this is a stowaway crammed up in some hole. Yeah, it's you know, like right? her spot. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. So she said, yeah. So um, now you can knock if you want on this one. You haven't needed to on that. Yeah, I would definitely, uh, you know, because you, you walk by and it's not like a whole bunch of, like the doors open kind yeah. of thing, but there's no door right there. Yeah. So uh, I would give a wrap, wrap, wrap. Okay. So she at that point. Uh, oh, so actually she she uh, is a little bit startled. She stands and the door just opens, right? And then she turns, right? And um, and she looks she looks behind her and she looks and she steps forward. Um, and um, she, does she turn or is she like Dune style turns? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, she, she just turns and then she um, she raises up her veil and she's gorgeous. She has raven black hair, um, very very thin, pale pale skin, and um, uh, and she says, "I am Lady Cordial, uh, Cordell, excuse me, uh, Cordell." And she says, um, "Greetings, uh, Master Maker Arbor Holdenhale, at your service." Ah, she says. Um, did you need something in the room? Ah, uh, well, see, the captain and I worked out an arrangement where I would make them some shelves for books in each one of the the cabins here, and uh, just stopping by. I'm kind of feeling awkward now. No, uh, he's just well. <laughs> I she says, um, I I will let you do your work in the room. Oh, um, as long as there's no trouble. I mean, if I can come by at a different time where you're not going to be bothered. But she's no, no, please. I don't wish to interrupt your work. Please go right ahead, right? And so at that point, she exits out of the room, 
right? And then she walks up, she walks up the hall a bit. And then the area where you would walk up the stairs, right? Uh, she stops, right? And she doesn't go within 20 feet of it. And she literally just stands out in the hall. Like, you know, um, like, so she's not going up on deck. Yeah, she's really not convincing me that I'm being, a, not being an inconvenience. <laughs> but she says, <laughs> but she's, she's not convincing and me. And then she she's says, not a vampire. Please. <laughs> Campaign mystery. <laughs> you have got it. So, what were the goats for? He's the vampire. He's the vampire. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You can't have inspiration. Can't give you double inspiration. Um, and so, uh, so uh, swift yeah. in the notes. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, but you, that, that's you totally okay. earned inspiration for that. So that when, is a campaign mystery. Well done. When uh, I'm not spending my time in yeah. the waves as a dolphin, yeah. uh, running in front of the ship, I'll well accompany. Um, Ilyoff? Ilyoff, when he's harp playing with my pan pan pipes. Okay. All right. Whether he wants me to or not. Nice. All right. So are you are you going to put shelves in the room? Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. And so <laughs> it is <laughs> awkward. You come back and you're like an hour later. Or <laughs> nah, see how long would it take you? It takes 10 minutes for fabricate. Oh, yeah. And Perfect. I basically get instantaneously right. whatever I want. As long as I have the raw material. And she is. Thank you so much. All right. And then she she, she goes back in the room. You're very welcome. You have she's... really strong veins. They look so. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a masculine. Uh, so, so, Scott, what, what I did um, was uh, since there's 12 dragon marks, I, I basically just went through and had him roll four times awesome. and just took you know, wow. so one, what, so one down. What does he got? So he's got Expeditious Retreat, Mage Hand, Blur, and Non Detection. Wow, those are nice. So mine are pressure. so much cooler. Well, in a pinch, I didn't. I didn't have. Uh... Thank you for doing that. That was really helpful. All right. Um, so you have discovered. Oh, and and oh, and she says, um, it is. Uh, she says, I do not like to go up above. It is a touch of seasickness. She says, I have been reading poems. Uh, later, after you finish your work, if you would wish to um, read along with me, perhaps we could. You could spend time down here. I could exchange some dwarven verses that I know with you. Some excellent, sure. excellent. Thank you. I'm always so, interested in learning so tired, new poems. So tired of so the far. goats All right. reciting poem tree okay. with me. Okay. Uh, now you were. <laughs> oh yeah. So you were spending time with Gorvisi. Did you have any questions from her, or did you want to uh, any questions at all, or anything you wanted to do while you spoke to her? Um, I'm just going to basically, you know, like get her story of like, you know, her life uh, at sea and just in general how she came to be here. But also too that the uh, female fighter yeah, that, wow, that, wow. that was putting on airs. Um Arvin. I'm Arvin, I'm gonna um sort of uh, offer to tutor her with the blade. Wow, okay, then, all right, yeah. excellent. Um, okay. Gotcha. And give her some pointers how the how the past were a little more uh you know a a, a more adept warrior than she may be. So you spend you spend about an hour with Corvisi, you do some songs and um, she's very happy to have them. And then you go up and you uh, you speak to Arvin, and uh, so Ar um, Ar Arvin comes over and she says, she says, oh, explain your imps. Servitors, nothing more. They know their place. What dark lord do you serve? It actually serves me. Um, it's it's a weird contractual obligation with my deity. But, Basically, some fiend was was tricked and entrapped, and I um I go around either bringing fiends to heal or banishing them from existence and sending them back from whence they came. And what of you? She says, Ah, well, me and my crew. Uh, she says we are on our way to Asiant. Um, we feel that we uh we were curious why now that Queen Darien Erwin has is in um is in power, perhaps there will be uh. The ability to trade with that um, with ACN, or um, actually, you know what? I'm sorry. Back up because that, that would step on your toes. She says, "Actually, I can take a uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, don't, they don't know it. Yeah, yeah. She says, "Actually, what we were interested in is uh, we have seen many of the magical items that are in um, that are in Olmir, but we were thinking, especially at our, uh, I am a folk hero. I have saved several villages." She says, and well, um, congratulations, oh, right? And uh, well, well, done. well done, right? And actually, I gotta do this. All right, so she says, she says, I wish to show you something. She says, just to show, she says, so you know who you are dealing with. <laughs> okay. uh, nice. uh, oh, yeah, and she says, this is a ring of water walking. I, she says, I, I defeated many people to, to 
earn this magical item, and I believe me and my crew will be able to take other magical items from Asient. That is she fantastic. Says, you have so much water to walk upon here. That is the best item you could possibly have whilst upon the sea, actually. The, exactly. the, the sea is your floor, as it were. That's fantastic. Well done. Well done. I have a room in that. <laughs> she says, listen, I see you. Uh, oh, now do, does your character carry, you carry a blade, right? I do. Yeah, a sword, yeah. Says, I, I also have a flame tongue. Um, so. Oh, and she says, listen, um, I hate to tell you this, but the ringing of the belt is a little long. And it's, at this point, she reaches over on your mouth, and she just, like, uh, does it one buckle. She says, if you wish, I would be more than willing to show you a few strokes here on the deck. Oh, uh, yes, but of course. All right. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> All right. Let's do, uh, I want a, give me an attack roll. She's going to do the same. No, actually, here. you guys won't be, you know, going for full touch, but uh, just for representative. All right, and hold on. And good luck. No, don't tell me my result. Yes. Don't tell me your result quite yet. All right. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, all right. Oh, natural one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Oh, that's, that. that's ugly. All right. Uh, so she's got a five and a natural one. All right, go ahead. What Twenty six. <laughs> a little bit better. <laughs> you right. save her from stabbing so herself in the foot. Yeah, I will. Right. 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 Then at that point, uh, she goes where she like hacks at you, right? You you parry, uh, spin, you know, and just knock her over, clean under her butt, and then before she's even up, you're like there with your hand out, and uh, before she gets up, she's like, perhaps you could teach me a stroke or two. <laughs> uh, maybe if you would like. Excellent. She says, I I apologize. So she says, you have adventured for some time now, haven't you? A little, a little. Maybe. She says, there are times where I can, she says, I have a leader from my team and I must, um, I must be brave at all times. So please forgive my, uh, my hubris. Let us get to practice. Appearances are, uh, are important, but sometimes you must need back up the words, and then I help her up, and then we go back at it. Yeah, awesome. All right, so so you are actually teaching Arvin now, right? No, is that, is and that, she is more than happy to learn. No, is, that, is that the fighter or is that the knight? Uh, that is the fighter, the fighter. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah. All right, and uh, so you are um, in as the dolphin. I gotta get back to you in a minute. Yeah, um, cause you're being you're eaten. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> Megalodon. Megalodon. Oh, and <laughs> actually, oh, and yeah. we did come up to play pipes with Gorbisi as well. Um, we and, did. Um, actually, and you stay for a while when he goes up and you're you're just talking with Gorbisi, and Gorbisi tells you that her and Captain Bl um, Brian Bl Bale, they are actually from uh, one ship. They never met him. They never met Pirate Lord, uh, Pirate King, uh, Craig Ironhoof. They were on one of his ships and actually they served as mates there um but they said that um he was he actually was extremely generous with uh, with what they took and um that actually he he would essentially what they he would do is they would roll up their ship and they would demand a tenth of all cargo on that ship and if they gave a tenth there was no blood and if they didn't give a tenth they would slaughter everyone on those ships throw their bodies overboard Take everything. I look and a little crew that ship. I look a little scared. You're a pirate. She says we were both me and Ca me and Captain Brian Bale, and uh, when we. But you seen, guys seem so nice for pirates. Exactly. That's we left. It was too much, and mm -hmm. uh, neither one of us really had a heart for the. And one of the reasons why we stayed was there was a time where we had seven ships in a row give without any blood, but when we saw one ship killed everyone on that ship, um, we uh, we said it was too much and we left. So. Uh, just wanted to let you know that that is, and, and this only comes up because you've been playing the pipes where you guys are having some yeah. of the light. Well, I too, I too understand what it is to be ostracized, ostracized from your people. Uh, you know, you're, you know, I understand that it was a matter of conscience that probably drove you to, to leave. But, uh, you know, when I was growing up, I started to manifest uh, the power of the dragons, and, and they, they're whole, they are holy creatures among my people. So much so that it, it, it cut when I, once I took on the aspects of these holy creatures, it created a rift between me and the rest of the people that slowly drove me out into exile because uh, they could no longer they can no longer see me for as a month. But 
but as, as this connection to to the to these greater beings and, and even though that's what they how they perceived me it's not what i felt you know i, I started to feel the magic of the dragons within my blood bloodline but I, at my core i still lump i'm still just another tribesman and, and uh, it just created too many barriers and i had no choice but to leave i was already living i was already living amongst my people alone wow it is truly um she says yes so you know what it is to be an outcast to have lived one life and now to have another now i must say i am very fortunate i think even more fortunate than you uh, captain brian bale is quite charismatic and people seem to really enjoy spending time with him and we've had this wonderful ship and we've done excellent business um she says but it seems like you've had a harder time of it um but it seems like you found companions is that i have it is looking good and i'm going to get a wife after this <laughs> she says those cat, those cat women are mighty fine looking cat folk my my you are an adventurous one <laughs> she says i must tell you um while while i'm here no one else on the ship believes me uh, believes this of me she says, and certainly, and the one one of them actually teases me up believing it. She says, um, <laughs> Shalborn, uh, Shalburn, the Minotaur wizard, actually teases me of this. But I one night saw um, Ojutarns. Um, she says, saw Ojutarns' egg, one of his eggs, floating on the sea. I could see it for well over a half mile. Everyone was sleeping, and I didn't want to wake anyone up. But it glowed a pearlescent blue, and um, and over that egg, I saw a huge dragon fly over, protecting it. Ojutarn is a is is a sea dragon that controls the 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 sea between Aeon and Olmir. And she says, and I really have. have I haven't told anybody this for quite a while because no one ever believed me. But perhaps you, as a, um, with your understanding of dragons, um, keep an eye out for his uh, his floating eggs. Oh well, absolutely. That's a, it. Sounds like a, quite a, quite a good omen and blessing that you see and saw that. I believe it is. You're the first person to believe I even saw it. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs> so that's your 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 talk with Corbisi. All right. You were talking to Captain, Captain Brian. Next, okay. the invite, the invite, uh, actually, actually yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. In your world, number one, do Minotaur have their own language? Yes, they do. Right. Uh, all right. So, uh, do you speak it? No, not at all. All right. Okay. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm, guys, I'm an Indorvan. Yeah, these guys speak common, right? And actually, um, one of the things you, you notice is when the crew talk to each other, they talk into they talk in a language you've never even heard. Which is actually uh, um, a sea language among that is specific to the pirates. So they actually still use that among pirates themselves. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. So Captain Brian Bale comes over oh, and he so says, um, he says Alistron, I he says, I am truly enjoying these Parshwabans. Thank you so much. You are generous." Well, oh, I was I was given coin and I don't I don't care much for. Uh, for, for, for keeping it so i figured if if all will have their their journey it, you know enjoyed better because a little bit of a little bit of coin was spent then so be it he says what is the purpose of having coin if you do not spend it he says there was a man i knew who did the same he had tons and tons of coin but all he ever wanted was more they never let any of it go i completely agree with you what is the point well, I, 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 you know, heard tale of, of dragons sitting on this this vast horn. Agreed, <laughs> he says. But uh, I to tell the truth, I've never even seen a dragon. Tingling. He says they're really quite it's rare. Horn hearts, right? Well, I've I, I've traveled around a bit. These, uh, well, I have the combined you know, This group has come from a dragon now. Uh, various yeah, various yeah. places, like uh, someone to look up yeah, to. So, <laughs> tales. Uh, Omir is it, is it Omir or Thracian? So, uh, Thracian is the world. Omir is a continent. On that world. So, so Thracian is, a, is a, essentially a place of portals. Yes. Um, and that, is that is that common knowledge? Oh yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So you know, with, with Thracian being a place of portals, as, as some might say, you know, travelers come from everywhere, and you know, some worlds dragons are are far more common. Others not so much. Yes, uh, he says. Well, actually, to tell the truth. I really wondered if there were any dragons on Thracian, but he says, I cannot deny um, your friend Belagar 
is proof that there must be dragons somewhere. He says, look at his skin. He's like, oh, God. No, I mean, so his, his <laughs> visage is more than his skin is draconic. Yes, indeed. He says you're gonna end up on someone's wall. <laughs> <laughs> it is the most dangerous game. He says he can be. I, I actually uh, think that the, the the other other knight is is a, is a bit more of a savage than the rest of us. Not not savage, but more more of a more of an excellent combatant, I guess you should say. He says, well, once again, uh, he says, I, we are truly blessed to have you aboard. We're trying to make this the best journey you shall have, although there is quite a bit more time to be spent. What, um, um, what, what type of uh, troubles might, might lurk upon the sea? Many. He says, one, the pirate lords are difficult to avoid. Uh, we very well may need to, uh, to uh, take a certain... I, already I am taking a route to try to avoid the pirate lords. They are always a threat uh, on the oceans. He says, um, other than that, there are storms. He says, storms do come up. I do not fear them much, only from the perspective of my ship is sound. And he says, and we have excellent crew. And I am also extremely um, blessed to have Shalbar. He doubles our crew with the ability to make these constructs, mm. which is quite excellent. Well, I'm uh, um, certain my, my, my dwarven friend will be picking his ear before, before too long. Yeah, indeed. Uh, well, th that would be excellent. Um, he says, uh, so, um, yes, and so comments. those are the major, the, the, <laughs> says, oh, in addition to that, there are beasts in the sea, there are krakens, all types, he says, and we have battled many of them. Oh, well, that's okay, you, you don't see krakens unless somebody, uh, says release the krakens. <laughs> <laughs> he says, he literally no, walks on the wood. He says, you just said. No, no. I, don't, I don't control any. Oh. Uh, he says, so not. <laughs> says, so That's great, like the urban myth where you say Bloody grandma. Mary in, fr in front of the mirror. Of the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> it was getting blamed. Bloody crack and bloody crack. Hey, I, I'm, a, I'm a paladin, but I, you know, I've got so many other stats that are important. Wisdom had to go. <laughs> <laughs> 10 intelligence, 12 wisdom. All right, so you continue to talk for a while. Was there anything uh, other than that that you wanted uh, to I wanted to, uh, I just, you know, basically I'm trying to, you know, see, see where this, this guy stands. Uh, you know, he seems, seemed jovial when, when I met him. You know, he, he still seems to exude that, that personality. And, you know, this is the, if this is the one who's essentially commanding the ship that I'm, you know, put, putting my life in his hands. I need to know who he is. Yeah. Um, so, so after that, you know, similar in, in fashion to, uh, you know, as Ryan did, I wanted to go, uh, you know, speak to one of the other adventurers, but I'm going to kind of call out the knight. Okay. Um, oh, oh, Ulmir. Okay. Uh, the knight from the other team, yes. right? Yeah. Uh, we may get to that. I'm going to shoot over to Bart for a minute, but that was good. Uh, and, um, yeah. Who has inspiration right now? That's right. Oh, just I it's killing me. You can't do double inspiration. It's the only thing I don't like about five you right now. You, you, just give him one. Right. Yeah. Like, there's you, a change in the DNG that says you want. can do whatever you want. Every day while I'm pleased. <laughs> so, yeah. so I think so, it's page zero. Yeah. Does yeah. it really yeah. always say you can only have one? Yeah. 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 Uh, as, as the DM, it, it says in the DMG, you if there's yeah. a rule that you don't like, you change it. Change yeah, that's true. It says it. So don't kill yourself. I'm going to give inspiration for that. You have double inspiration. We're going to try it for this game and see if it goes crazy. We'll try it for this yeah. So basically, yeah. I mean, you, the only way it would go really crazy if it's if you had a, par, a bard the, the, in the party yeah. and font of inspiration. Like, oh, yeah. bard. well, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. essentially, like you know, the way double inspiration would work is okay. You have it twice. You choose to use one when you no, want. No, no, no. It, it should be every for every inspiration. All or nothing. You have to use it all. And you just roll that many d20s. <laughs> <laughs> what well, you could do with that? I too. Could really want this right. to succeed. Boom. <laughs> what were you spending your time doing? So. My time in the in the, the town guard and the army, I always loved music. They always used the music to honor the dead. So I had brought with me a set of bagpipes hmm. because I wanted we to form learn. a band. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to learn. I had time. I knew we were gonna have time. So Oh no, he's not a good sound player. because they're obnoxious when you don't know how to play them. That is what I'm primarily spending my time doing is trying to learn to play the bagpipes. Fantastic. All right. Many of the Minotaurs are thinking about going back to their Fire. fireways. Thinking about <laughs> just like practicing? Yeah. Oh. I need to learn. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll right. show them. 
I <laughs> 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 don't have bagpipes, but true, yeah. my jack of all trades, I've had to pick up on before, right? <laughs> right. I have a dwarven, dwarven sea anvil, which yeah. is kind of like a big walk, but there's two of them stuck together, and then there's different cut pieces out of it. And you can tap them with anvils or like rubber mallets or like leather covered uh, hammers and you get different notes out of it. Profession is pretty cool. cool. All right. Yeah. So there's okay. going to be the whole shit I mean, is filled with music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Just in case you were wondering. I don't there's know. no wonder somebody you know what's in the bagpipes. I wouldn't call that music. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that what I just heard? Uh, I don't know. Yes, that, that's what you well, heard. Yeah, I guess it could be it's, closely You just related. described steel drums. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's made out of anvils. Well, no, it's like... It, I guess you're is, like, how it, can I make a drum set you can't move anywhere ever? <laughs> oh, I know. No, no, make no. It it's, it's, it's a hollow, so it only probably weighs like 30 pounds. All right, so oh, at this well, point, throw it um, my back. we're gonna kick it into gear, and uh, <laughs> yours is coming right next. Right. But there is, uh, so you go back and you actually spend a very nice evening meeting with reading with Lady Corgel, and she really enjoys the dwarven horror verse. You, you uh, enjoy the, the poetry that she's reading. And I also check, have her check out the scene again, but with the pads on them. So it's like light. Oh, nice. That's pretty cool. Yeah. The mood music. Yeah. Right? Actually, uh, the she's working so the inspired that she actually starts to um, write bow, verse bow. to the songs that you've been playing. Wow. Boy, she's going to be surprised. <laughs> she seems like much relieved. And she's she's actually, she's yeah. Night out. yeah, it's definitely a night out. All right. So, and so you notice she perks up when the sun went down. Okay. All right. Um, so at that point, um, weeks are going to pass, all right? And so a few of you actually have, uh, so you now have the opportunity to gain a skill, but there are a couple of you who have found other occupations, right? One, Lady Corgel would, uh, take a lot of your time if you let her. So you can I'll spend... I'll let her take a lot of my time. All right. Okay, so he's gonna make it. Seduce and banter is really hard. All the time and talk poetry with you. And so, and actually, when night goes up, she actually goes up on deck and she talks to everyone. All right. All right. And and you know, and stays close to so you. I monopolize her daytime. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And then uh, I go to bed. Right. right. Well, well, actually, do you adopt her schedule? Do you start sleeping in the yeah, day? Yeah, probably would. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's especially if she's more, especially if she gets more into her poetry. All right, double the amount of goats starting to disappear. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, like, there's like, well, it's one goat a week, right? And so I, like, and, and actually you guys, yeah, goat. right. And so, so the rest of you guys are eating um, cured meats and are eating cheeses and wine. The, the fruit's gone after the first week. Yeah. Um, Is there any place that I could set up shop? It's not, I don't think it's big enough. Oh, uh, here? Yeah, I need a 10 foot diameter uh oh yeah absolutely area. okay you can. so oh, I yeah. like, if there's like a cabin above the it would be right here deck. so they actually right, make I was a just space like, for you right there I was just move like all those barrels. Up against something you just need the wall yeah right. it's a wall or, or right well, they, 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 could, they actually quarters. help you and they make a space up above for you yeah, right. yeah. Absolutely. all right so i just open up the thing and put, put my take out my wooden implements for like the rail to not let people fall into it i can also stick it up against the wall no, no, it's so, fine. You put I, uh, it right up on deck where those barrels are. They'll move the barrels. And then out. I would just ha I would create staircases that go down into it, nice. and like uh, a cover for it. Because I've got like a few pallets of wood in there. Now, what did you want to craft? You have a few. Mm -hmm. What did you want to craft? I, uh, whatever. Uh, I like. I, I'll make a. Um, now, do you have the ability to craft magical items or only? No, I mean, I, you know, I don't. You know, it depends on how you go with it. I'm from Eberron. I, you know, if you want to do the magic formula thing, I'd have to have magic formula. If you wanted to do something else, then I'd have to have whatever components you deem necessary. Well, you had enough time, but you, so at this point, you don't have the skills enabled to, so you can only make mundane items, correct? Yeah, as a as fabricate, you can make fantastic. What did I give you for ever for being from Eberron? Uh, history of the realm of Zuriot or Zuriot, or how you say that. So yeah. history with a focus on that. I will realm. allow that. I will allow you to make. Um, the low the common potions so you can make one okay. one during this voyage okay so right? long and now. from now on you can craft potions yeah right? i also have al i mean oh well uh, I, 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 i'm yeah. an alchemist i'm yeah. a brewer There's more. yeah you're fine i'm it. a yeah. jeweler that's I'm no problem at all. so you can make uncommon potions okay okay so go ahead and look through the dmg okay, you can sure. make one during this voyage sure all right uh so at I'm this point this. um oh arvin would definitely so here's what happens you're going to gain a new skill or she's going to essentially gain a level, right? Yeah. <laughs> and become a way better fighter. In fact, um, yeah, it's your choice. 
Uh, my choice between her between level and... you getting your skill or you get or you giving Arvin an entire level essentially. And she can level. All right. Uh, All right. Well done. So Ar so actually you can write that on your sheet that you um you taught sense. Arvin. Um, actually you could choose a feat that you taught her. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. And what does she fight with? Uh, she fights with a long sword. Uh, two handed or does she use a shield? And actually, tell the truth. Uh, to choose a new weapon to train her. In. You could switch her entire style. So you're way better than her. She'll follow whatever. I mean, I'm a great great sword fighter. Um, She'll switch. All right. Yeah. So they go like, yeah. Uh, so at that hey, point, uh, hey, uh, hey, we need a great sword. Great sword. <laughs> yeah, actually. So okay. you forge a great sword. <laughs> you're you're, right. you're like, yo, come over right. here for a minute. He yeah, slaps up a hole in the wall. And like, there's a, there's a whole montage where the first week she can't live to any relationship, like, having struggle with it. You know, and then so, you know, so and one at of the, the end of the that, song, she's like, uh, you're walking across the rails with it. You know, I'll teach her Savage Attacker, which is a feat I have. Fantastic. So if if anyone's paying attention, I don't take meals with anybody. Oh. Where do you eat? He's a dolphin. As a dolphin. Right. So yeah, I'm ch I'm chopping fish. on fishes and. Any kind of crustaceans I can find, or edible kelps, that kind of so stuff. So we've got we, uh, kind of cake and goat sounds man, pretty good. After all, 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 all right, okay, <laughs> all right. I have a way to cook. All right, it. let's get to it. All right, so you're down in the dolphin, and you've been down there for weeks, right? You're eating kelp, right? You know, and uh, uh, yes, what dolphins I eat, you know, and uh, you've been swimming for weeks, and um, a whole school of dolphins come up, right? And one of them comes forward, and you can see he has um, he has a scar right under his lower jaw, mm. and he comes forward. You've been down there for so long, right, that he speaks to you and you can understand, right? And uh, and he says, he says, oh friend, he says, why are you sticking near near this ship? I, I'm friends I'm along in the ship. Ah, I see. He says, well, we found an excellent school of fish. Do you wish to come with us? Absolutely. All right. <laughs> oh, okay. He says, great. You'll never have to see that stinky ship again. It smells so bad. Right, so, so they they just veer off, okay, and uh, so they start to go. And he goes, and he goes. So why were you with them? I have friends on the ship. He says, "Oh, are you, are you traveling? Were they traveling somewhere?" Yes, and uh, what's the name? Uh, Asian. Asian. Oh, he says. Well, then you must be careful. He says, "There's three different directions, and they'll need to go between them." He says, "Well, right over." He says, "If they continue going that way, they'll run right into Craig Ironhoof's ships." He says. But if you wish, he says, if you took them to the north, you would run, you, you would have a chance of passing near um, Utenjarn's eggs, and the whole voyage would be blessed. Oh, that would be that would be amazing. Wait, would you guide us? I'm sure we could reward you. He says, well, I would, but um, as you know, if you come across Utenjarn's eggs on one of sixty, uh, he says, at the pass of every two moons. Um, of course, Utenjar actually looks out over the eggs. You know, when an egg takes 70 years of floating in the, in the ocean to hatch, um, she does need to search for her eggs every now and then. But every two moons, she checks. Now, if your ship were there, when Utenjar's egg were simply floating in, the, uh, in, were floating in the water, they would all be blessed. But if we're on the day when she was checking, they would all be eaten. Are you sure you wish us to guide you there? Yes, actually, I'm willing to risk it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, somebody who's not doing it, I need odds for one in 60. Figure out how I'm going to roll that because because we're going to roll it up. All right. <laughs> no, he's he's just, just, this is a random encounter. <laughs> Don't always assume we're going to play. And then, so, yeah, then he, he says, uh, he uh, says, um, be 30? Um, I, I can do it. That's 2d30. That's only 2 oh, to 60. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Or I could get a, a, a d100 and you can just ignore anything over 61 or 60. No, no, there's, I need to roll a one in 60 chance. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so I don't even right, know so, how I do that. So then you do the uh, D100. It's going to take some math. You do a D100, then you think oh. over 60. No, no, no. I would do a, uh, uh, God, I need one in 60. Sorry. Random dot org. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If it comes up a one, we're boned. Actually, Anything yeah. over 60. <laughs> That's rolling pretty much the way you do it. But see, the, th the thing is, I need to see if a number from one to 60 comes up. You will. Yeah. yeah. One through sixty like will come up. happen. Yeah. yeah. We'll go over sixty. It's not one to roll it sixty times. No. No, no, no. All right. Go. go ahead. All right. So that's a seventy-five. So therefore, we ignore that. 
because it's over 60. Oh, and then I take All the right. number that's there's under a four, 60. There's a 49. And then, so. then you guys would be good. You would you be there on the 49th day. I got it. Okay. All right. I understand. Okay. All right. Yeah, um, we'll be in by a terrible dragon. Well, he didn't roll it. So, that wasn't the actual. That was my roll. Roll. Shit. Shit. I want to go to the captain and we tell him that I have intelligence that uh, the Iron Hoof is, we're on a direct course for the Iron Hoof, but I know another way. And I oh, so get, you're done talking to the dolphins now? Well, I, I'll continue talking to them, but that's what, I'm just going to let you know what I'm going to do when I get back. All right, hold so, on. Let's let's finish okay. the dolphins because it might. And he says, "So, and he can make it eaten before you can get the air." <laughs> All right, so so there's those two those two. And he says, and then um, yes, and he says, then if you and he says, but if you're heading to Asian, the shortest route, and he says, you'll go um, you'll go right through the Sahagi. And he says, um, especially if you're heading direct, that could be very dangerous. Although they are mobile, it could be difficult to avoid. Well, I don't want to tangle with any Sahagan, and I really want to see the egg. Uh, says, it, it, so dragons are dragons are holy to me. He says, "We." He says, "We will bring you some of the fish." I see that you should probably stay with the ship, even though it smells so bad. Mm -hmm. Are you staying with them? Um, no, I gotta stay with the ship. Yeah, he says, "We'll bring you some of the fresh, uh, the fresh fish we find from the school, and I'll lead you to where Ojajarn's egg is." Okay, so um. So they're dolphins, and they probably don't have like a, they probably don't have a, a sense of time per se. So, so when, uh, well, I'm going to try and time it so that when we go buy the egg, that I'm, a, I want to be a dolphin again with them, just in case the ship gets eaten. Well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. When you get gambling, to watch, gambling yeah. with our lives. So, uh, and so, so, right. so you're everybody gonna else can roll. That's like all the hell. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to go find uh, Brian Duff. I keep I keep hearing Brian, not Brian. Yeah, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> so you go to Captain, talk to the Captain, and you're going to explain to him what Captain, you're... Captain. Um, great. News. I just I just <laughs> learned great news and and ill omens as well at the same time. We are in a direct path towards the Iron Hoof, but I know another way. Thank you. Well, we are on the shortest route to Asia. That may be the case, but I just learned from some of my friends, and I point to the pot of dolphins. That they they already know that the iron hoof is directly in our path, but they know another way and they're, they're willing to guide us. Oh. So wait, you're lying to him, right? What? No, 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 okay, no, you're not. Okay, you're good. All right, I understand. All right, I just he's excluding. The, he's I'm excluding, excluding the yeah, Sahagan route right. 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 where we can get eaten by Sahagan. <laughs> right, right, right. All right, all right. Uh, one, you're trying to persuade him. Yes. Bluff no longer exists, does it? Nice. Deception. Deception, yeah. Deception. Yeah. Deception. Um, yeah, that's if you're lying. But you know what? You're not you're not flat out lying. You're telling them all, everything you're saying is true. There's just part Yeah, I don't want to get eaten by Sahagan no and I don't want to get persuasion. Our, our, our stuff I'm gonna taken say true. Now actually I'll tell you right now, it's gonna be tough because uh he does not wanna yeah, there's storms, it's dangerous on sea. Mm -hmm. Nobody likes being out sea longer than they they need to, so I'm gonna set your DC. Hold on. I am going to use my inspiration for advantage. Yes, nice. Good luck. Hey, do you want to use eighteen uh, on the die? And what's your result? A twenty-one. You needed a twenty. Nice. Right, you got it. And he says, "So you're wait. You are saying that we're so going to mean. see. Where are we going again? Just to avoid the Craig. The we're going to avoid. Um, wait. No. Go ahead. My my friends have told me that if we continue on this way, we will run directly into the the, the pirate. The pirate um, and King's if we fleet. avoid it, we won't. And if yet yeah, if we follow them, they're going to take us another way that quite is is quick, but it will. Wait, but they they actually said it's quicker though, right? Uh, no, no, it's just a little bit out of the way. To okay, it's, the it's a slight it's a yeah. slight detour out of the way, but we will not run the risk of running into the Iron Host fleet. He says, "Thank you for this wisdom." 